Otherwise, we'll end up having to find the, the video on a different channel and such. Okay, <laughs> the True Sonic Spirit Channel. <laughs> yeah, that one. Oh boy, I have uh, not uploaded that for a while. Then again, it's not really a point for me to upload there since I already have my own. Uh... All right. Yeah, get... well, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, you're kind of the only one that's keeping it alive since everybody else left. Pretty much, yeah. Well, I have my own <laughs> YouTube channel, so there's not really a point. Mostly just there for if I want to make make a more cynical, angry video, I guess. Anyway, yeah, could <laughs> someone tell me if it's online? I can't really check very well. We should be online now. Uh, let's see, it's waiting. Oh and... uh, yeah, it's on now. Are okay, we on? Yeah, Are we on. live? Yeah, but it just popped. Yes. Up. And it's on the same <laughs> thing. So, hooray! Hooray! <laughs> oh, we did it. All right, and we're live. Sorry for not being here last time. We needed a bit of a break to prepare for April Fools and all that. Even though I only have one video ready for tomorrow, but we'll see. Uh, wait, not tomorrow. I have another extra day. Lucky me. <laughs> no, tomorrow's yeah. Easter. Yeah. Tomorrow's Easter. Yeah. Not that I can work much yeah. of my videos. I have to go visit family. <laughs> but yeah, welcome back, everyone, to Sonic Dissected. Mm -hmm. uh, friends. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Do we have technical issues? What did Sylvia say? Come on, Discord, load. No, she's saying it's um, fine. No second video. Live All right. and live correctly. No second video. Excellent. Alrighty. So, uh, Luke is not here yet. He's uh, visiting his mates in London at the moment. Having a pint and all that stuff. He abandoned us. How oh, dare he? We gave him a week off last time. But yeah, he says he'll... Uh, Come, so we'll see if he pops in five minutes before he uh, <laughs> end the stream. He did send in his uh, thoughts for the music video, though, which I did not prepare to put in the file, so it's going to be awkward later. <laughs> no. I will worry about it later. Indeed, I will worry a lot. But yeah, or maybe I can prepare now. Uh, in the meantime, how are you guys doing? Everything all right? Ewan, what are you doing? Easter um, plans, April Fool's plans? Eh, not really much planned, unfortunately. I've been very miserable because work's been a bit busy and obviously you have to draw up the uh, thumbnail, which you know must everyone must appreciate my hard effort. Yeah, thank Especially you very much. statues so, yeah. and the um, like demented-looking Robotnik rocket in the <laughs> background, looking like he's constipated. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just uploading the um, Sonic Underground songs to the um, Discord, so at least we can listen to it when the time comes. <laughs> Already? And at least I heard you're busy. Had a tough week? Yeah, I took my RHIT exam oh, on uh, Tuesday, and I passed. Ooh, nice. Congratulations. Yeah, hey, I am now a registered health information technician. Whoa! Hey! hey. <laughs> An official title to go along with it. Nice. Yep, and so I have been job hunting like crazy. <laughs> I'm just... Yep. So... Gee, busy, congratulations. Busy. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, but I was pretty busy this past week, and that's why. <laughs> and now we're bothering you with the stupid stream on top of it. No, okay. I need I need a break. My brain is... <laughs> it's like, my brain hurts. <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> Alrighty. You got the Easter plans? Yeah, we have an Easter Sunday service tomorrow. And I expect I'm going to be having dinner with the family as well. Which, that'll be fun. Indeed. <laughs> and then April Fools. Mm -hmm. And Easter eggs. But <laughs> Cadbury. And chocolates. <laughs> oh, oh, Cadbury, yeah, that's British. I'm not sure they have Cadbury's in England and America. Not too many, anyway. Maybe cream eggs, but they're yeah. not the true cream eggs. <laughs> yeah. We have winter chocolates. We <laughs> <laughs> I know we got Kinder eggs, but it's not like the regular stuff over there. It's like the Kinder Joy. So basically, the version of Kinder that's actually legal to be sold in America. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> One of the older things that they outlaw. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, no toys and chocolates and beer, but dee, but dee. Yeah. <laughs> 
Jeez, I'm having trouble importing the Lux audio files. Flash is being very annoying at the moment. This is, uh, oh, I hope I'll figure something like, out later. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, like, kind of ridiculous. I mean, they should be the same sort of audio files like normal, but it's just like... What exactly is different about these, Luke? What have you done to them? I think it's my program. I think it yeah. has uh, not enough memory at the moment, but I can't do anything because we're streaming. Oh, well, we'll <laughs> figure out later. But yeah, for now, let's just go with it. Yeah. Salah, you got yeah. something to say? Or shall we get into it? Um, well, I mean, uh, the, the reason I intend to leave early today is because there is a convention going on. Because there, there's, like, a convention every three months here, it seems. Uh, and Welcome uh, to California. Bill Farmer's going to be there. Oh, hey, Goofy. Ooh. Nice. Yes. Very nice. Alrighty, so you're trying to get an autograph from him. Yeah. Uh, more of I'm hoping to get like a, a video to send to my sister because my sister and I's favorite Disney movie is a Goofy movie. Oh, that's an awesome one, yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get like a personalized message for her. There we go. Oh, nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> Goofy, Sam and Max, even a Detective Date from Yakuza. Yeah. Pretty prolific. And a lot of Looney Tunes, surprisingly enough. Wait, Bill Farmer was in Yakuza? Yeah, he played the Date, the detective friend of uh, Kiryu. That's if, hilarious. <laughs> in fact, he's one of the few actors that even returned, because he was in the original 2005 one, but he also returned in the, the new ones. So it was pretty awesome we got him back. It's just the same Mar Mark Hamill never came back. But yeah, get a little off topic now again. But yeah, I, I hope you enjoy yourself at... Uh, Convention, but yeah, California. So constantly conventions and stuff there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Every day must be a convention. <laughs> <laughs> My be... poor wallet. Indeed. <laughs> California ain't cheap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Shall we move to Sonic Underground? Yeah. All right. I guess we're skipping me then. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Now Melty's the one who's being forgotten. Poor Melty. It's not me again. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, you got something to say, Melty? Um, Go ahead. Um, see, uh, I don't have much to say. Like, I've, I've mostly just been keeping myself busy with uh, video projects. Like, uh, I, one, I've been uh, uh, dipping my toes back again and doing some more YouTube poop uh, madness. So this time it's just going to be me farting around with the... Uh, uh, the Minecraft villager videos from Element Animation, so I've been having fun messing around with that. Uh, the other bit is mostly a lot of RG Sonic character files related stuff. Uh, one is that me and Sal are working on a co-op episode on Omega. Uh, but we just finished the script, so we're just, uh, well, I'm mostly just waiting for him to get his audio recordings in. Uh, you told me there was no rush because you were going to do the Luke one first. <laughs> yes, that is true, because, yeah, and that is honestly, something I... And honestly, you sound pretty overwhelmed as it is. <laughs> yeah, that's true, because... So yeah, speaking of which, yeah, that's the... Well, nothing planned for Easter on my end, but on April Fool's Day, me and Luke are going to be uh, posting a video and just, you know, goofing around. You know, just like the old days, even though I very much regret those days of Give Me Chaos Theory, but it's a little <laughs> different. It's uh, never fun growing up as an artist and looking back at your old work. Always embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, like, give me chaos theories. Yeah, like, it's like, oh, I thought it'd be just a fun idea, like an unofficial spin off show to Sonic Dissected. And then looking back, the way it turned out, like, nah. <laughs> I, 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 like, basically, there's only one episode that I liked, and that was the bit with me and Luke um, kind of dissecting, like, Infinite and why he kind of just doesn't work. But every other episode I did, it's just shit. Like, shit, 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 one good one, and then more shit. Oof, sorry to hear that. But hey, now you're in the yeah. actual dissected show. Well, what, what it turned into anyway. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, why the twist? <laughs> okay. What a twist indeed. Flash is really being annoying. I have to reset it. But while I reset uh, Flash, let's uh, start off the little preview for Sonic Underground, I guess. Yeah. Ah, yes. Wee. All 
already. Flesh should be reset. So we get finally get to the infamous Knuckles episode. Oh boy, his uh, introduction. <laughs> <is> <laughs> <a> <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> Yeah, we finally get to hear Roger's thoughts on a uh, Sonic Underground take on the Red Echidna. Indeed, but first we have to give a synopsis of this episode. Anyone wants to give it a go? Nobody? Okay, I guess it's my turn. So, we go to Floating Island, where for some reason Sonic and friends come because Queen Alina sent them there, which seems to be the plot of every episode, but whatever. Where we get to see Sleet and Dingo uh, try to find Knuckles to set up a trap. So, well, Knuckles is filthy on the field with traps that I kind of like because we haven't really seen <laughs> Knuckles, uh, the trap master, before. But anyway, uh, Sling Dingo ha apparently managed to make a fake hologram where Sonic and friends <laughs> awkwardly state that they uh, want to steal Knuckles' em emeralds. So, we get, of course, our traditional Knuckles story where he has to fight Sonic because he thinks Sonic is going to steal his emerald. So, yeah, Sling Dingo just. Uh, <coughs> Knuckles now befriends Sleet and Dingo, which still includes him sending his dinosaur to try to kill him anyway. So uh, being Knuckles' friend is not a good idea, as usual. And uh, the dinosaur ends up eating the hologram machine, which I come back later, of course. Then uh, Melting Man makes a quick cameo in the episode as a little monkey. So anyway, Sonic and friends uh, show up on the island. They get to see a random uh, vision of their mother. And then uh, they run into Knuckles, and then the rest of the episode is pretty much Sonic fighting with Knuckles. Uh, Sonic and Sonia have, have a bit of a disagreement on whatever they should no talk to Knuckles or fight with him. Not that it matters because Knuckles is really listening anyway. So fight, 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 fight. Eventually all of them fall into a hole in the ground that Knuckles dug. However, both holes randomly have a door in them and a weird metal pipe, so I'm not quite sure how those traps work, but whatever. Anyway, eventually uh, they'll find their way into underground caves where uh, Sonic and Mani Manic and Sonia run into the dinosaur again that shows them the fake hologram. So now they know that Knuckles has been tricked. Not that this really ever comes to goes anywhere. Meanwhile, uh, Sonic and uh, Knuckles are still fighting. Knuckles almost falls to his death, but uh, Sonic, in a wonderful, creepy animation, uh, rescues him. And now they're best friends forever. Anyway, so Manic and Sonia get the hologram machine out of the dinosaur and unfortunately immediately break, so they still don't have any evidence. But now the dinosaur is their best friend and uh, agrees to show them where Sleet and Dingo are, who are at the moment close to getting the Chaos Emerald. Or I guess the Master Emerald, but this episode calls it the Chaos Emerald, so whatever. Anyway, Knuckles himself notices this as well because there's some sort of waterfall on the island that can show him visions or something. So now he also knows that Dingo and Sleet are coming after his Master Emerald. So, so uh, Manic and Sonia blow up the whole cave, which only helps Sleet and Dingo escape easier. And then we get a very stupid climax where everyone is kind of screwing around and talking to each other and just letting Sleet and Dingo escape. You know, Sonic should catch up with him in five seconds. Fortunately, Sleet and uh, Dingo is very clumsy, drops the Master Emerald, and so Sonic and friends win anyway. We get uh, our pointless fight sequence, and... Uh, yeah, everyone is best friends, and at the end... Oh, yeah, Queen Alina left a message that Knuckles should be their first ally, which, since we're 16 episodes in, it's kind of a lie, but, uh, oh, well. I guess Queen Alina <laughs> screwed up again. But, well, you know, looking back at it, in some cases, it, this episode kind of feels like it um, foreshadows the Sonic forces in a way, like, oh, Knuckles should be the general guy, the allies team with Sonic Manic and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, it's like 30-something years later, Sonic forces happens with Knuckles apparently being the general or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could see that. <laughs> Sonic Fr Frontiers, Pico, why not? Forces. Forces, ah, oh, forces and frontiers. They, they <laughs> occupy the same spot in my brain for some reason. <laughs> uh, I wish I was called Sonic Rangers. So I won't <laughs> mistake them all the time. Uh, will Roger ever stop mis uh, yeah. Will Roger ever stop mixing up forces and frontiers? The no. world may never know. <laughs> we continue to look forward to it. Someone is asking us in the comments if you ever do a Legend of Spyro dissected. Uh, I think I played it, but uh, I don't have any plan. Do you, you guys played Legend of Spyro? Um, nope. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> I remember playing the first one, and I played a little bit of the second one, and it never got around to the third one, but I do have all all three games on PS2, so hey, consistent gameplay controls, I guess. Yeah, that's the second uh, trilogy, wasn't it? it? 
Uh, that was like the yeah, that was like the first attempt at a reboot. It's like after the classic series ended with the uh, <laughs> you know the, everyone's favorite Shadow Legacy that no one remembers on DS. Uh, but yeah, they tried to reboot. It's like okay, we're gonna go for like a Lord of the Rings kind of style, blah blah blah. They made it into a trilogy, and they did. And yeah, that was kind of the end of uh, Spyro for a long time until the reignited trilogy came out. And before anybody says it, no, Skylanders doesn't count as a Spyro franchise. It's its own thing, not a Spyro thing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, and now I think about it, I don't think I ever played a second trilogy. So uh, Sorry, no dissected coming. Anyway, back to this episode. Anyone yes. else have a thought? Salah. Uh, so, for one thing, uh, a, a significant portion of this episode, uh, Dingo is just in his underwear. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that was uh, something I didn't notice. The first couple of times I watched this episode, I no. uh, until I watched it today. Yeah, I guess the uh, fire singed his pants when they were um, roasting alive there. Well, and hopefully. <laughs> they only, only at the very climax of the episode when they're running away does Dingo suddenly have pants on again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oi, where are my pants? <laughs> he can't transform into anything except for having pants. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed at the beginning of this Knuckles introduction, he's rather sadistic. Yes, <laughs> he it is. Alive over a fire <laughs> on a spit. And yeah. His dinosaur pet comes up and he's like, You're going to be Chops' his dinner. Yeah. Burn, you tasty morsels. Burn! <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of sadistic. Yes, <laughs> he is. not going to lie. It's a very interesting this take on that. Is, yeah. <laughs> this version of Knuckles is hardcore. <laughs> just going straight in for, like, you know, just cooking his victims. <laughs> he does not fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised how uh, high his voice was. He kind of reminds me of when Sala did the movie Knuckles voice for my cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, that is interesting, because, um, yeah, first animated appearance of Knuckles in official Sonic media, and he just so happens to be voiced by, uh, uh, Brian Drummond, who would, years later, go on to voice Robotnik in Sonic Prime. Yeah, What's interesting how things go. And, of course, uh, wait, same he's last... Voiced by... Wait, is he voiced by Ryan Drummond in this? No, no, no Brian, Brian Drummond. Brian, sorry. <laughs> but the needs, also nice connection there with uh, Ryan Drummond as well. Same last yeah. name. Uh, Ryan so, Drummond did eventually voice Knuckles in uh, Sonic Shuffle. Sonic yeah. Shuffle. Sonic Shuffle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so making yeah. Knuckles the only character to be voiced by both Brian Drummond and Ryan Drummond. <laughs> Funny how that goes sometimes. It's a small world. Yeah, yeah surprised that. Uh, no, surprised that he. Uh, yeah, surprised Brian Drummond didn't reprise Knuckles or at least a version of him in Sonic Prime. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because they wanted a deeper also, voice, I yeah. guess. Since he really has a high yeah, voice here. Yeah, I guess. So it's like, well, at least the voices for the different Knuckles. Like, yeah, they all sound good. Like, except for the main Knuckles. Because that one, I feel like the actor is trying too hard to sound like uh, movie Knuckles. Yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, at least your thoughts on this episode. I thought the animation at times was... Uh, a lot of the times it's kind of janky. <laughs> this one is very interesting animation. We're going to talk about that. It's yes. the most jankiest of all episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Especially the fight with Knuckles. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> what happened Knuckles. to their budget? Or... Knuckles just spinning his arms, running at Sonic, who just like slowly sidesteps him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely more sort of like, why even bother using super speed? Just literally just move out of the way, just casually. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, here comes Knuckles again. Better move to one side. Yeah. And he yeah. runs at him, like, so... Like, I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he doesn't even run at him. It's just more like he just, like, jogs at him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Power walking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, this was a very action-heavy episode, so I guess that's why the animation was more janky because they spent a lot more action. Yeah, sequence. There, there's 
there is certainly a lot happening, and not all of it looks good. In fact, very yeah. little of it looks good. <laughs> it's yeah. like the first time he goes up and hits Sonic, he doesn't even touch him. Sonic just goes, ah, and <laughs> flies back into the tree. Knuckles was nowhere near him. Yeah, that's a good point. I thought Sonic just knocked himself out because he was trying to dodge Knuckles or something. But it just looked really maybe, pathetic. Maybe Sonic was just, sorry, maybe it was just Sonic being polite to Knuckles. Like, <laughs> oh, you got me. Oh. <laughs> trying to humor him to avoid the yeah. fight, yeah. 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 The well, that's the manic says, boy, that guy's good. It's like, yeah, he knocks <laughs> on his back without even touching him. <laughs> He's that's using full power. power. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's so many, like, weird animation moments. There's, there's this one where, like, Sonya and Manic are, like, down in the in the cave, and, like, Manic, or Sonya just suddenly, out of nowhere, summons, like, a tentacle of light out of her keyboard, which is like snakes around the room looking for things, and then she, <laughs> she it, it's coming out of the keys of her keyboard at first, and then like it cuts to her like using it to weld open the door, and then it cu- when it cuts back to her, the beam is coming out of the the barrel of the gun, so <laughs> she's just got a weird yeah. light tentacle now, I guess. <laughs> well, it's kind of a cool idea that they lighted Dark K for the thing, but it wasn't communicated very well, yeah. I think my favorite yeah. animation part was when Knuckles is about to fall to his death, he gets his close-up of Sonic <laughs> with a big creepy smile in slow motion. <laughs> like, this show always has a problem that characters always smile at inap- <laughs> inappropriate moments, but it was one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, he's about to die! <laughs> it looks so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> And then yeah. Sonic's hand just like inflates as he reaches. Out. Yeah, it gets bigger. <laughs> Come here, I'm gonna eat ya. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Sonic's doing in his forward smashing brawl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, then especially when he like pulls him out to the ledge, and somehow Knuckles is like much smaller. So I guess when Sonic grabs him, it's like got bigger. <laughs> yeah, it's like when Sonic grabbed him, it's like ah shit, you knocked out the super mushroom in me. Now I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what happened is not that Knuckles got smaller; it's that Sonic got bigger, starting with his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, a trick perspective shot. <laughs> yeah, when the shot starts, you think it's a perspective thing, yeah, he's just in a, but then he yeah. touches knuckles and it doesn't work anymore. But yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so big, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boy, yeah, I've heard of having a growth spurt, but this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, even knuckles wondering. looks confused. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because he's like, I'm confused. Oh, ow! <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> It's just because he's just like confused, like, you know, wait, am I smaller or did he get bigger? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah. Or going off with like the whole uh, mushroom thing. It's like, oh, he touched me, now I'm smaller. And then he touches him again. It's like, oh shit, now I'm dead. <laughs> hey, Angel Island has a mushroom hill zone, so there you go. Mushrooms are plenty. Even though yeah. we never like, Just like Tintin <laughs> getting hit with a leaf. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Especially with that ominous sort of wink Sonic does as he just brings Knuckles in a bit closer. It's like, let's talk, bud. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, yeah, let's go. Wink, wink. (laughs) What are you thinking about? Actually, don't tell us. (laughs) Keep it to yourself, please, Melty. Okay, Okay, so real quick, uh, in in the comments, I I do want to point this out. Uh, I do also appreciate that this show, like, We'll give it credit that it kind of displays Knuckles' powers in the same way that it displays Sonic's. So it, it kind of like emphasizes the the idea that Knuckles is as strong as Sonic is fast. Mm-hmm. So I I think that's that's a cool idea. So yes, thank you for bringing that up, Rhino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Except, is interesting. Yeah. With, um... I also I, love that they emphasis Knuckles' traps, because that is an element of his that is kind of ignored in most yeah, of the media. Yeah, in fact, quite a few times during his fight with Sonic, he set off some of his traps. Yeah, I really love that. That is indeed a component of Knuckles that was never really used afterwards. No. Yeah, no, I mean, imagine that. Imagine yeah. using a character less than a decade after they debut and aren't flanderized to hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I also like how his how his um, trap skills are introduced with Sleet and Dingo 
where it's like he's tough and he's especially known for his traps. <laughs> they fall into a trap. Yeah. yeah. Perfect timing. <laughs> his traps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will also say, uh, you know, a, pr- a problem we we really have with Knuckles is how gullible he is in a lot of media. But in this one, like, at least Sleet has, like, proof that his claims are true, even if it's, like, actually a deep fake. Yeah. (laughs) Sleet was using AI the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) He was using AI before AI was a thing. Yeah. (laughs) That's how how you know Sleet is the villain. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, but speaking of AI, it is a perfect... I mean, when you hear them talk, they do sound like AI characters. I am totally going to Knuckles, that idiot, to steal his emerald. Like, it does sound like an AI voice. So they do (laughs) predict it perfectly what it's going to be like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially in that. Um. Especially in that one bit when the video starts glitching. Like, oh, we gotta find those emeralds. Gotta find those emeralds. Like, it's not the same toad. It's like a different pitch. Which that seems to happen in a lot of older cartoons. So I can imagine that it must have been just cheaper to just do it in one take rather than edit it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, li- I liked how fake it sounded. So that was guys a nice touch. So yeah, as much as we make fun of the episode, there's a lot of good stuff about it. As usual, I love the backgrounds. The backgrounds are really beautiful. There's a lot of atmosphere here. Oh, oh yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. With uh, we get our first glimpse of um, well, the show calls the floating island, but yeah, like from the exterior shot, it has kind of a very fall theme to it. You know, a lot of oranges and whatnot. Yep. At least you said something. Yeah, I was going to say um, at the end of the episode when um, Sonic. Sonya and Manic are having supper with Knuckles. He feeds them something. I, what, I, I think it's called a cryptonid? Cryptic. Cryptic. Yeah, I wonder if it's supposed to be on pun, a pun on cryptid, because they never say what the creature actually is. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I wonder if it's supposed to be a pun, like, you know, Velocity was a pun on Velocity, if this is supposed to be a pun on cryptid. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. They love their puns. <laughs> well, also, di- um, Knuckles has a dinosaur pet, so <laughs> in cryptids yeah, oh, are yeah. often associated <laughs> with prehistoric animals, so... A yeah. Salamander. yeah, in my own head canon, uh, I think I like to imagine that Chomps is like the creature that would later be like captured by Gerald and then mutated into the bio-lizard. <laughs> I... No! That is not... If you can believe it, that is not the first time I've heard that theory. <laughs> Oh, poor thing. thing! It does. It does yeah. greatly resemble a smaller version of the bio lizard. Yeah, that's. Oh wow, that's interesting. Also, can we talk for a bit that Sonic has a UFO at the beginning, or that we never saw that thing before, yeah. did we? Because I was thinking, what? We'll never, <laughs> we probably will never see it again. Yeah. This yeah. is randomly <laughs> a flying machine. Which, here's the thing: looks... that would be that would have been extremely useful in the next yeah. episode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Holy shit! Flying saucer. <laughs> Eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they stole one of Eggman's hovercrafts because it's in the shape of an egg. Yeah, oh yeah. It's <laughs> like covered it in egg. duct tape and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of showed how quickly you had to put that thing together just to get to the floating island. <laughs> like, we gotta get get there, there quick. Okay, give me a second. There we go. I all mean, done. that's probably the idea behind it. It does make sense. I mean, it does look like it's just held together by duct tape, and it makes sense he would steal stuff from Eggman. But yeah, it's never explained in the episode itself, so yeah. it's just my head cannon. Especially since it looks as though it's covered in moss for some reason. That too. I guess it's uh, yeah. been in their basement for long. What was that? Yeah, yeah, covered in rust. Yeah. Very odd colored uh, rust, though. Yeah, that is true. So, like, the episode begins with, like, them flying towards the island, and, like, Sonic is complaining that, like, oh, th- th- this tip-off that Alina's here better be real, because I missed out on the opening of a new chili dog stand for this. And I'm <laughs> wondering, like, how big of a deal do they make the opening of a chili dog stand? <laughs> Sonic does. I guess the stand itself doesn't, but... <laughs> but also, it's like, well, it's great to see where Sonic's priorities lie. <laughs> yeah. But, but like, I, I get that, like, Sonic would take it seriously, but, like, how would he know in advance that one is opening up unless they make, like, an announcement that one is opening up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe because uh, Robotnik used it as a ploy a couple times, and you know, all Haddock uh, Venters think that's uh, the normal thing to do. 
even though it most <laughs> it only started because they were all booby traps for Sonic all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Because man, he would be easy to booby trap here. Just like throw one. Maybe that's how Robotnik knew that they were going to the floating island because his original plan was to catch them at the newly opened hot dog stand. There you go. And then there he never was, showed then he up. Got the tip from Alina, and then <laughs> he went to go look that's for her there. Good, that's a good point. Is Robotnik like says that like Intel says that they're they're on their way to the island, and it's never revealed what his sources are. <laughs> Probably the hot dog vendors. I mean, the next episode implies that Alina has the hot dog vendors under her payroll. It wouldn't make sense for Bonnick also has them. I guess being a chili dog vendor in, in this universe uh, so, uh, gives you, like, two... Give, gives both uh, Queen Alina and Eggman as customers that because they want information or manipulation on Sonic all the time. When you open when you open a chili dog stand, you have to swear allegiance to one faction or another. Yeah. <laughs> in chili dogs we trust. <laughs> now I want the Sonic video game where you uh, have a, a chili dog sells a sim and then indeed you have to join a faction and you're still organizing this whole army even though you're technically only selling chili dogs because you need to manipulate <laughs> Sonic all the time <laughs> <laughs> ah silliness how wonderful but yeah just gotta appreciate all the um wonky animation going on, especially that one sort of awkward angled shot of where Knuckles is seeing Dingo and Sleet stealing the Chaos Emerald. It's like a very awkward shot. It's like stretching his head out just to make sure you could see his eyes and eyebrow and such. like, dude, that's yeah. too stretched out. <laughs> but also, gravity works. There's that uh, moment where Sonic is on a bridge that collapses and he has to run through it, but then he it falls, but it floats up again. But it falls and floats up, and it's this whole Looney Tunes thing. Where he's just flapping his arms. It looked very either interesting. That or, <laughs> either that, or he's channeling, channeling his inner Yoshi. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is really fascinating. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of. I mean, they have a big obvious things that are wrong, but also tiny thing. Like one tiny detail I found very interesting. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, just like this shot where you see everyone from above, like the top down view with an explosion, except it's the explosion very small. So you show this big, uh, the camera's zoomed out very far. So you think, oh, there's going to be a big explosion, but it's a tiny explosion. So you think, wow, why is the camera zoomed out so far? <laughs> It's like all these these weird tiny little decisions that make this episode so fascinating to look at. It's like it, it's constantly like confusing you. It's like, well, what's what's going on? It's so lovely. Also, in, during the music video, there's like shots where you see like a weird shape for like a split second, and it's very distracting all the time. Like it's a silhouette oh, yeah. of a drum, I think. Yeah, yeah, think yeah. It's the, the medallions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the medallions. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mostly remember just the drum showing up there. Yeah, yeah. Like they had to put more emphasis on manic sort of like drum yeah. beat that much. Like, because <laughs> yeah, I, I think it shows up when there's like a heavy uh, bass hit. Oh, it was on the timing of the music. Yeah, so it's really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's just a crazy style with the '90s music video thing. Although nowadays it might be a seizure hazard, but I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think it goes fast enough for it to be a seizure hazard. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely not an expert on seizures at all. Yeah. Me neither. Oh, all that right. Awkward, that awkward shot of, like, Sonic and Knuckles running. I love this shot. Their face expressions are so perfect. <laughs> straight out of one of my cartoons. I love it. Like Sonic with his derpy smile, Knuckles like he's about to kill someone. <laughs> it's like just so spaced out, yeah. Knuckles is, like so, knuck, yeah. Knuckles is so pissed he grew fingers. <laughs> and the fact his muzzle skin grew towards his like upper eye area. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Colored the, the, side, the parts around his eyes uh, tan. Yeah, man. Sonic has clearly had too many mushrooms from Mushroom Hill Zone. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Especially with how rather square looking his running looks. Yeah. I, I just had like a, an idea pop into my head with the with the whole knuckles fingers thing. He's just knuckles thinking to himself punching them isn't good enough. I need to strangle these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need 
It's time to ring that ne hedgehog's neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, for what worse, just stop poking him. Yeah. Oh, wise guy. <laughs> Point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going for onesies. Well, here's twosies. Point. <laughs> <laughs> here's five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pick out two. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, good stuff. <laughs> good times. <laughs> so yeah, clearly Knuckles would be the Mo of the Three Stooges group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, ow. I suppose... I suppose that makes Sonic Curly and Manic uh, Larry. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, Manic would probably be the Larry and Sonic would be the Curly. <laughs> well, then what does that make sure, Sonia? Mr. Bean. <laughs> oh, oh Sonia's the Shemp. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, no disrespect to Shemp fans, you know. I like Shemp, you know. Me too, but... <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just thinking of the three stooges get with the pants where he's trying to iron the pants and they keep rolling up and then he gets oh, yeah. <laughs> slammed into the closet by the ironing board <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry so yeah so yeah, I think we're all a, uh, a fan of this shot of Knuckles running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It should be mounted on a wall and framed. Indeed it should be. Sonic looking higher than a kite. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that chaos energy, man. It really fucks with your mind. <laughs> Speaking of the Kale Samurai, can we talk about the moment where you see the Kale Samurai like, walking around like it's a Muppet? Like just oh, one yeah, shot where you just see it move in the air, like boink, 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 like it's hopping. Yeah, it's like doo 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 doo. Yeah, it's just out for a walk. Yeah. So, uh, the girls are wrote to send you now? Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that time, guys, but now I've got to get going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Screw you guys. I've got to go home. <laughs> that explains how they always move. I also love the shot of Manic sitting on a rowboat uh, on a robot. Yeah. He looks so yeah. cute and adorable there. Yeah. Oh, he looks so happy. Yeah. I'm imagining that would be Sonic flying on Superman at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a good time. But yeah, that shot with Manic, it's like, yeah, Manic, go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, I ow. I think we're broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely broke a lease, yeah. <laughs> Again? <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> it could happen only on Dissected Alive. <laughs> Nearly every fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Well, yeah. It could also happen. That's, uh, that's when you know we have to go into a five minute commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today's sponsor, Greg's. They make they make nice yum yums. <laughs> they make the most delicious sausage rolls you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> what have you done, Ewan? <laughs> what? No, no, Melton brought it up first. Fair enough. <laughs> you only said mess sausage rolls. He did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a dish. <laughs> yeah, right. So, like, one thing I wanted to point out is the whole deal with uh, Knuckles using his uh, fists to attack. Like, instead of actually punching, he, kind of, he just kind of spins them around, which, I don't know, I guess they just couldn't figure out, like, how to translate his fighting into animation or so like okay we'll just spin his arms around yeah that's cool wasn't there a law in the 90s where cartoons couldn't show anyone punching each other or something well so something punches. like that yeah 
Because yeah. yeah. if superhero because shows also yeah. never showed punches. <laughs> because yeah, I mean, like, cause, yeah, because there's those odd times where you like see, like you know, they f like flash like a white a bit of light when someone gets punched, but other times they like just leave a certain punch in. So it's like, okay, so that punch is considered okay, but not that one. Why? It's, he's still getting hit. Yeah, in the next episode, she's Sonic punching uh, Dingo, though he's dressed up as a sofa, so I guess that doesn't count because he's yeah. a sofa. <laughs> but yeah, that's the next episode. <laughs> yeah, pun yeah, yeah punching an animate objects, pure, that's fine. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Die, hello. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what? One thing I noticed, like, if Knuckles actually, like, was doing doing, like, a handstand, then obviously he could match Sonic in speed. Just because of how fast it's going there. Oh, that, <laughs> like, you know, I should do that. That sounds like a great animation. Oh, is... uh, yeah, like uh, Knuckles pulling a prank on Sonic and like, just grabs a sword and like, spins his arms around crazy. <laughs> like this. <laughs> just like Obelix. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I've got a picture in my head. <laughs> Knuckles just doing an, a wheelbarrow run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Behold, Sonic, I'm now a wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh, and, and like so Sonic could be the one holding his legs. Yeah, you go. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, that's like another thing that could have uh, predated something in the future with, um, well, I think Sonic Boom did something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a Sonic Boom joke, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe at least. Yes. Breathe. I'm trying. <laughs> Open the window and breathe. <laughs> yeah, in with the good air, out with the bad. <laughs> but then again, if you open the window and everyone saw you laughing hysterically, people were wondering, what the hell is she on? <laughs> the, <laughs> side. the stress of searching for jabs. It breaks your brain. Hi, <laughs> Samira. In the comments. Yeah. Oh man, we're not oh, even yeah. on episode two yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm okay. Although, <laughs> hey, what is she on? I'm on too much coffee. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> God, then again, if you're, oh. But then again, if you're on that much coffee, you'd be running outside going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First it was hyper shadow, now there's hyper release. <laughs> so you can fly in space. <laughs> to the moon at least. Yeah, to the moon. <laughs> so, anything more to discuss with this episode or uh, shall we move? Uh, uh, just, I just um well, like me, is like, yeah, good stuff, but um, you know, this definitely won't be won't be the last time we'll be seeing Knuckles. I may hope yeah. so, since it's so dramatic about him joining them. Mm. Yeah. So uh, he's gonna be they're, part they're... of a three-parter, actually. Oh, yeah. Yep. Sala, which, uh, which of course we, we... Sala wants to like try and decide who, if we should like you know keep the the you know the episodes in chronological order, or if we reserve the free parter for the end well, of Sonic Underground. Well, okay, so for, first off, that's the thing. We already haven't been watching these episodes in chronological order because we, uh, well, first off, we, we did the this Halloween special. We yeah. Did those, those episodes out of order. But also, yeah. we, we didn't do the first episode first. We did the chronologically first episode first, mm. which is beginnings. We didn't do yeah. episode one first. We started with episode, like, whatever... 27, I don't know what beginnings is. <laughs> yeah, because for uh, some reason the origin story like shows up like halfway during its airtime. Yeah. yeah. But for some yeah, reason, so the, though, <laughs> like for some reason, like part one not beginning is like is shown first, or is it the the Chaos Emerald part one saga that's shown first? It's because for some reason, like they show part ones first from both episodes, and then they show part two. Well, like the both episodes like back to back type of thing and then part three you know thing so it's like why are you done it like that because it's like very so confusing anyway. if you're just watching part one of a show and then suddenly you get like a different thing going I was like what's going on here I thought I was going <laughs> to watch part two of this show but anyway yes Sala so anyway <laughs> okay now I want to talk for no sorry Sala be teasing it so uh, <laughs> it's, 
Yes. Uh, it the 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 episode that came out last just kind of like abruptly ends with like cliffhanger sort of not really a cliffhanger but like a promise of like continuation uh it feels as if the knuckles three-parter is a better ending point to the series so i have been like behind the scenes advocating for us to cover those last <laughs> rather like than the as <laughs> <laughs> well I, I mean I, i'd be fine with doing the uh three-part knuckles story for last you know like save the big kind of epic thing you know yeah, because it does make the most sense for the ending of the series because, like, there, there's just a lot that, like, goes on that, like, it feels wrong that the series just kind of continues after that with the things that happen in that episode. Yeah. <laughs> like, All right. Like, the actual ending for, like, the actual ending for the actual last episode I find hilarious, but, yeah. Yes. The, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, the three-part <laughs> Emerald thing is more epic. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Then we save the other two parts for the for final. Well, it's I guess a we as a three parter. <laughs> yeah, it's a three yeah. Plus that 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 book ends it nicely, where the series begins on a three parter and ends on a three parter. Yeah. Yeah. We already screwed it up because we saw the first one now. So maybe yeah. we okay, usually do two episodes um, per stream anyway, so we just do the two. Well, on top of that, I think uh, the third ep the third episode of the three parter has probably what's I'd say the most appropriate. Like final s song that Sonic Underground does in the episode. Hmm. So. Mm. All right, fair enough. We we'll saved that for later, but it makes it funnier that Queen Elena says that Knuckles is their first ally. If this is supposed to be the finale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Th this isn't supposed to be the finale. The other, the there's going to be a three-parter with Knuckles later on. Oh, so this isn't part of the three-parter. Yeah, oh, no, I thought this was already the first one of the three-parter. Yeah. There, there is four episodes with Knuckles. Oh, okay. I was confused. Sorry. All right. Then I will save the three part for later. <laughs> okay. Then I was yeah. confused. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do like in the future. We'll just do the last three parter and then just <laughs> spend the rest of the stream just talking about our final thoughts. Because I imagine we're gonna have a lot to say about Sonic Underground as a whole. Yeah. It's quite a ride, yes. Quite a ride indeed. <laughs> At least it's a fun ride. It's yeah. a very fun ride, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and naturally, when we do cover episode 40, we will comment on the fact that that was the original ending of the series. Ah, uh, yes. So we can, like, yeah. make fun of the ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. But yeah, I, I'm enjoying the series so far. Even even the quote-unquote bad things are only bad in a funny way, so... Uh, no complaints here. <laughs> I'm glad you're liking it. I, I, I like how this episode ends with, like, uh, them revealing to Knuckles that Queen Alina is their mom, and he's so surprised, as if he has seen several other hedgehogs before. Yeah. <laughs> that was a weird thing, yeah. I guess he's just so caught up in the anger of, oh, they're stealing my emerald that he didn't think clearly anymore. Oh, well. Well, on top of that, um, when they reveal Queen Alina is their mother, he says, why did you say so? And I said, they did say so! <laughs> because <laughs> at one point, Sonya says, it's like, listen, Echidna guy, we're not here to steal anything. We're looking for Queen Alina. Yes, they did say that. <laughs> they did say so. Yeah. Knuckles, you hypocrite. <laughs> so it just goes to show he's not listening when he's angry. Well, yeah. also, apparently, Queen Alina was on the island when he grew up. So I guess she sort of maybe helped raise him. That's a good question, yeah. Uh, sure. Queen Alina, yeah. mother to all. There you go. That's the queen, she's mother to all. Why not? Yeah, just like Princess Celestia. She taught him how to set traps. <laughs> <laughs> and how to roast people alive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as the mother of Sonic, you have to set up a lot of traps because the, the little bugger is hard to grab otherwise. <laughs> I'm sure Trim Sonic is a handful to <laughs> parent. Sorry, it's all about <laughs> Remember, Knuckles, slow turns for a more even roast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if they don't leave, just remember, fry those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Feed them oh, to no. your pet. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, yeah. though, for me, like, when I was doing a failed sort of, like, um badly written fanfic sort of idea with Sonic Underground, I was gonna 
jokingly have like Queen Elena like done as like some sort of like saboteur spy type dealy do, but yet for some reason I had her imagined dressed up more like a solid snake. I don't know why, but I just thought, you know, <laughs> oh, but that would just be funny. It's like, you know, being like a saboteur and she's just running around dressed up like a solid snake and just going around snapping robots' necks and then just <laughs> literally <laughs> cooking all the random things she finds out in the open. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the Sonic Underground bits we couldn't show you on TV. <laughs> oh, my. Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> it's showtime. <laughs> La li lu Yeah. Mm. Alrighty! Uh, but yeah, yeah, one sorry. thing I was going to mention just before finishing off, like, in case anyone's interested, though, I'm uncertain of how the overall sort of um, project's actually going at the moment, but this episode, like, Friend and Foe, is apparently getting a reanimated treatment in the Sonic on Underground Encore, or as it's known mm. on um, Twitter... Twitter's name is Sonic Under Remix. Oh. About the eye for some reason. Alright. Oh, that's interesting. But, uh, you joined it? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, joined in, but unfortunately I was, was hoping to get this scene sort of finished, but I couldn't get it done in time, so it basically I've got the, um, you know, that infamous scene of where of where basically um, like Knuckles is questioning, why'd you save me? Duck, bud. That's the one I basically. Uh, that's the one I basically got. Yeah, you got the golden shot. Sonic Lucky you. Gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I did at least. Um, it's still in its rough stage, but I'll just share it on the. Uh, in the live streaming planning section. I know it's right at the beginning, but it's just because of audio issues. All right, I'll try no, to get did, it. You to... did keep him huge, mm -hmm. so that's that's good. That's the important thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Knuckles like. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing was, yeah, the thing was I was gonna have like rather than the um, guitar logo, like just peering out of, in the middle of the screen, I was gonna have like the um, Tiger Electronic game or Sonic Underground come out from Knuckles' mouth as he's yelling. And then coming towards the camera instead. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you save me? Let's talk, bud. <laughs>
head game with some very creepy looking statues. And I absolutely love how they look pissed off in one shot and then all of a sudden they look super happy in the next shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's another one of those weird animation details. Whoops. Oh well. Anyway, I think one Sala wants to do the synopsis of this one. Indeed, I do, and I I came prepared, and I even wrote down a synopsis. Um. So I have something to actually read. I'm not just like stumbling over my words and pausing and stuff. Anyway, let's. let's begin. Are you making fun of me? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm making fun of how I, I usually do it, where I'm, I'm just like, and then uh. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought you were making fun of all of us because I always do the like, descriptions unscripted. Yeah. Yeah, mainly myself, though. Fair enough. I, I, I'm just I'm just trying to be better prepared for my own sake. Uh, anyway, you. so this episode begins with uh, Sonic's stomach having a spasm from hunger. Uh, Manic asks him to help unload the van, but Sonic runs away to get chili dogs instead. Naturally, there is yet another pig running the stall, because they, <laughs> they always are. Uh, but this one also happens to work for Alina, because, as we mentioned earlier, you have to swear allegiance to one faction or the other. <laughs> <laughs> so he, uh, and for that fact, he doesn't seem particularly thrilled about uh, having to work for Alina. He seems, uh, just, he seems to just be running through the motions, doing his duty, and that's it. Uh, Alina gives him the signal, and he shoves a wrapped coconut in the bag with six of the worst chili dogs ever animated. <laughs> the coconut has a message from Alina saying that they're needed on Speedster Island, but surprise, surprise, islands are in the middle of the sea, so Sonic immediately gets worried. But <clears throat> but Manic assures Sonic that he can conveniently convert the van into a pontoon. Just then, they're attacked by SWAT bots for no reason. They hop in the van, and Sonic does a drive-by guitar solo, managing to destroy only two of the bots, with Manic running over a third. <laughs> drive-by guitar solo, uh, that sounds awesome. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, on Speedster Island, a very Samoan-looking and Blue Man Kuma-sounding tribal chief and his son are fishing, but the fish are gone. The father excitedly talks about their futures of having jobs and buying things, but the son just wants to stick tradi to tradition. Unfortunately, the, the old ways aren't providing, so they must either change or starve. Then my boy Bartleby arrives with Sleet and Dingo. Sleet, arri uh, sweet, eh, Sleet attempts to persuade the chief with random shapes on a screen that he calls a high-tech Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> Tetris, the hotel. <laughs> Bartleby also talks about using some suspiciously Sonic-like stone heads as decoration in the lobby. <laughs> uh, the, ch the chief doesn't really want to, but he realizes he has no choice but to sell the island. Uh, Montu throws a fit and runs away. It's revealed that uh, it's then revealed that there are indeed three stone moai heads that look suspiciously like Sonic, Sonia, and Manic. Mantu prays to the statues, but when they don't magically come to life, he immediately gives up. <laughs> As as he's leaving, though, the statue's eyes begin to glow in their respective colors of the hedgehogs they resemble. Wow, suspicious. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Sonic Underground pontoon van arrives at Speedster Island, much to Sonic's relief. Naturally, however, there are SWAT bots on jet skis guarding the island. <laughs> Son Sonic again emerges from the Astrodome to fight back, but he immediately falls and has to cling onto the side of the van to fa not fall in the water. He immediately climbs back up, successfully filling up four seconds of the episode's runtime before <laughs> summoning his guitar and destroying one of the SWAT bots before the second blasts a hole in the van's flotation device, causing the van to sink very quickly. Yeah, Sonic to fall in anyway. To <laughs> yep. Make... Sonic sinks to the bottom as we cut to commercial. <laughs> uh, when we get back from commercial, Manic quickly dives down and pulls a very ungrateful Sonic out of the water before making a crack at how they'd need a new guitarist. Once on the ground, Sonic begins kissing the sand, and Montu approaches them and immediately recognizes them as the Guardians. Sonic asks Man Montu who he is, and Montu is suddenly terrified of the fact that Sonic can speak, of all things. <laughs> so he runs away. Uh, where? Oh, I, I scrolled too fast and lost my place. Okay. Sonic chases after him, and I guess doesn't immediately catch up to him, as Sonia and Manic follow suit. Montu hides in the jungle, but steps on a branch and gives away his position, causing him to run away again. Sonic thinks maybe they can lure him out with music, so they sing about taking a chance, but it doesn't fucking work, so... <laughs> Somehow when the song ends, though, they find themselves at the statues and are immediately taken aback. Montu finally bows to them and reveals that he prayed to them. 
Sonia asks him what uh, he needs help with, and Monty reveals that Dingo and Slee are trying to buy the island, and also reveals that Bartleby is there as well, to Sonia's annoyance. Montu's father appears again, but the underground hides behind uh, the statues before he can seize them, I guess. Uh, the chief explains that he always wanted what was best for Montu, even if that is no longer what he initially wanted. Uh, the chief and the now satisfied and understanding Montu walk away. Keep that in mind. Montu now seems uh, to understand that, uh, Mo that the chief just wants what's best for him. And then they walk away. Uh... <coughs> And this leaves Sonia to storm off in Bartleby's general direction. Manic stays behind to study the statues because he thinks he sees writing. And I'm like, and I'm wondering about that. Like, oh, you mean there's writing under the musical notes? <laughs> <laughs> that will be important. Meanwhile, in the flying yacht that Bartleby and Sleet and Dingo showed up on, it's revealed that, gasp, Robotnik is behind the island's lack of fish. Who would have guessed? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He scared them away to prevent the Islanders from having enough food to survive, making them desperate enough to sell. Robotnik also reveals that he plans to roboticize the villagers as soon as the deal is signed, and he doesn't want Bartleby to know, because he knows Bartleby has a conscience, and he won't like this. Hmm. Sonic and Sonia sneak onto the yacht and into Bartleby's room. Son uh, Sonia hears someone coming, so Sonic, who somehow knows the lock code to Bartleby's closet, opens it, and he and Sonia hide inside. Bartleby enters the incredibly spacious and luxurious suite and immediately complains about the primitive conditions and how he can't wait for the resort to be built so he doesn't have to keep roughing it. He then uh, enters a code on the keypad and some mechanical arms just start manhandling Sonic and Sonia. The arms bring them to Bartleby, who is expecting to be dressed by the mechanical arms, so Sonic and Sonia just play along and throw a poncho and hat on him. <laughs> <laughs> and this just immediately gives away his, their position, so, like, why'd they do that? <laughs> they could have just, like, said something instead. But uh, as Bartleby and Sonia argue, Sonic gets too close to the suspiciously orange couch, which suddenly grows an arm and grabs him. Immediately, some SWAT bots just blast through the wall when the door was, like, two feet to the right. <laughs> and Sleep follows in after them. Sonic just beats the shit out of Dingo. <laughs> And then uh, Dingo transforms back and charges at Sonic and Sonia. Uh, and, but they, like, sides him, of course, and he just falls into the closet where the mechanical arms just do their stuff and start... <laughs> they just dress him in a fancy suit, and then the arms just hold out the dapper Dingo so that the audience can see him before pulling him back in and closing the doors. <laughs> that was totally unnecessary. We got to see the, the fancy suit he was wearing. Uh, Sonya dodges some lasers from the swap bots who are just absolutely obliterating Bartleby's room. Uh, Sleet yells about destroying the village and, like, just goes up to the closet where the arms just present Dingo again and he's just dressed as a British fox hunter for some reason. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, back at the statues, Manic is digging up the stone heads and he, like, discovers something. He's like, oh, it's not writing at all. Uh, and then Sonic and Sonya show up. Now, Panic's like, wow, you guys look like you got SWAT bots chasing you. That's because we got SWAT bots chasing us. But there are no SWAT bots chasing them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Montu suddenly arrives, uh, tripping over a rock as he does, uh, because he suddenly feels betrayed by the chief again, for some fucking reason. And, like, the <laughs> head doctor's like, no, it's just your, your dad's just trying to look out for you. He's doing what's, what he thinks is best for you. And after, like, he seems, like, skeptical at first. He's like, you really believe that? And then nod. And he's like, oh, okay. And <laughs> suddenly, they, they just hear the sounds of uh, sw <laughs> SWAT bots just destroying the village. And they, they like, uh, Manic, like, can't tell them their discovery before they leave. Like, Sonic's just, like, keeping up a brisk pace with the rest of them as they head towards the village. Uh, and, you know, you get to the village, and there's just some demolition equipment just absolutely obliterating some people's huts. There's a SWAT bot that just fires at nothing. <laughs> 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 he just fucking shoots the sky for some reason. Uh, Bartleby, like, is pissed, of course, so he, like, runs up to Sleet. Because, like, Sleet's just acting out of desperation to get the hedgehogs, so he's, like, completely going off plan. And Sleet just... Straight up tells him the one thing Robotnik told him not to tell him. <laughs> and Bartleby gets pissed. <laughs> so then the villagers are seen running away, and the chief uses an old sound clip of Dingo screaming for some reason. 
uh, Sonic somehow manages to catch up to the real fastest thing alive, the Chief, and tells him to lead the villagers to safety while he and his siblings take care of the SWAT bots. Which they do by uh, pulling on a vine, causing one to trip. <laughs> and that distracts him long enough for Sonic to use the Sonya spin and completely dismantle that one bot while sending the other two flying. Suddenly an orange, orange vine shows up and grabs the hedgehogs and holds them while Sleep brags about how creepy it is for some reason. Uh, and then Montu Creepy, because it's Dingo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Montu heroically charges at them, letting out a tribal war cry, and just immediately gets grabbed by a SWAT bot. Uh, Sleep threatens him, but is interrupted by the sound of Blue Man Kuma doing his best Tarzan yell as the chief swings into action, knocking over Sleet and the SWAT bots. In the middle of Sleet's temper tantrum, he accidentally hits the button on Dingo's remote, changing him back to normal and releasing the hedgehogs. Manic finally reveals that the obvious musical notes are, in fact, musical notes, and they have to play music. <laughs> so they, even though like the, there's only three musical notes, and apparently those are the musical notes you need to activate the statues, Manic just does a wicked fucking drum solo. <laughs> the statues all come to life. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 some of the SWAT bots are like shooting at them and like their lasers just bounce off with the most cartoonishly metal clanging sound you've ever heard. One of the, <laughs> one of the statues just crushes the SWAT bot and walks away, leaving the other SWAT bot to just stare at his buddy's corpse and just ponder his life choices. I love that <laughs> shot, yeah. He's like, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do that for? <laughs> what do you do that for? Poor robot. Sleet, Sleet, Dingo, and Bartleby all retreat into the yacht and manage to take off before the Guardians reach them. But the Sonya statue grabs a tree and throws it like a javelin, knocking the yacht out of the sky and into the ocean, where yachts belong. Bartleby yells at Sleet, who shapeshifts Dingo into an oar, and begins a long journey back to the mainland. The chief thanks the hedgehogs for discovering how to awaken the guardians, and then apologizes to Montu, just in time for him to finally accept the chief's intentions were pure the entire time. Keep in mind <laughs> that they never found out that it was Robotnik's fault that the fish are gone, so now they think they're going to starve, but at least they keep their land. As Sonic ponders how they're going to get off the island, the Manic statue lifts the van out of the ocean and brings it ashore. The statues bow before burying themselves back in the ground. The villagers all have a dance party around a campfire as the statues stare off into the horizon. The end. Yeah. The end. Yes. Exactly. The end. <laughs> Quite the episode. Yeah. I love the face expressions of this episode. <laughs> and then everyone goes fishing. The end. Yeah. <laughs> No, the manic statue, while he was under the water, he took out whatever was scaring the fish away. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but they don't know that. The villagers never found out that it was Robotnik's fault that there's no fish. Yeah, that's, that's true. Point. Although I guess maybe they had an... Maybe Sonic, Sonya, and Manic had an inkling, and so... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just... <laughs> like, yeah, I, mean, I just assume, like, what the manic statue brought out from the water was basically the uh, van. Yeah, but he yeah, could have done more there. things while he was under there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, everything's all solved off camera. Indeed. Yeah, essentially everything's Probably. solved off camera. Well, we we'll never explained why the fish were gone anyway, so who knows. I don't know, maybe, like, maybe, like, Dingo and Slee, as well as Bartleby, were all pulling those silly faces at the fish that scared them away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all that's yeah, they just that, like set uh, out like a row of underwater television screens and <laughs> showed those images over and over again, and that scared the fish away. There you go. <laughs> Let's go with that. Why not? Yeah. yeah. All all that's said is that Robotnik was somehow scaring the fish away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think maybe they just put like all those big pictures of him just smiling, and that scared them off. Like, <laughs> yeah. Look at me and my beautiful face. <laughs> yeah, my beautiful head. So, Look how pointy it is. <laughs> so, so Robotic has like this thing where like he's gonna after he buys the island, he's gonna roboticize all of the villagers. So why is he bothering buying the island? That's a like, very good question. One, obviously yeah. it's not like he's gonna lose money on this because he'll just take it back when he roboticizes them. But why go through all the effort? Just roboticize <laughs> them and take it. I guess he just yeah. finds it funny and interesting. 
But yeah, that's kind of the problem with Sonic Underground. It tries to be like a satire on, on rich people, on rich society and capitalism, but it doesn't really work with Robotnik since he's a complete dictator. Like, he doesn't really work as a businessman. He's just... He operates by his own rules. Yeah. But oh well, that's mm-hmm. uh, probably too also deep for the cartoon ch- anyway. Yeah. <laughs> also, very yeah. cheerful looking Robotnik. There. I love how Robotnik looks. I mean, this episode is just gold <laughs> with her face expressions. Robotnik is so <laughs> yeah. giddy, like, yay! I'm gonna take over the island. <laughs> yeah. Robotic is really a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> At first, he looks so at peace. Almost like he's praying or something. It's a very weird shot, this first shot. No, meditating. Meditating, <laughs> yeah. yeah like he's, uh, <laughs> no, he's praying to himself. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's like, oh, thank you, me, for being on this island. I'm gonna take all those people and roboticize them and get more money. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that's how, how he starts his meal all the time, just <laughs> giving himself, like, graces. Thank you, me, yeah, for everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we must pray to our Lord and Savior, me. <laughs> I bless myself for all these eggs I'm about to eat for Easter. There you go. <laughs> uh, hey, there's our Easter theme stuff there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Got to throw it in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty fun episode. And yeah, like Sylvia already said in the comments, the shots of the uh, rocks, the statues rising is pretty epic. It's a very intense looking episode. Yeah. I'm also going to say, in these past two episodes, like, Manic seems to be the problem solver. Yeah. Even though he's, he has very little screen time in both episodes, sometimes it feels like the writers keep forgetting him, and then he does constantly solve all everything, so... I guess to yeah, apologize like for... Was... Yeah. Yeah, because he was in the previous episode. You know, he was able to ask Chomps, you know, about or figure out how to communicate with Chomps. <laughs> you know, oh, so yeah, like one snap means yes, two snaps means no, and then he just asked him like yes or no questions. Indeed, very smart. Then, of him. Oh yeah, just yeah. So just more proof on why Manic is the best one of the siblings. He's best boy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And then this one, while it's like. Um, Sonic and, and Sonya go off to confront Bartleby, which, what what's that going to accomplish, I'm going to be honest. But then Manic stays behind and actually observes the statues. Yeah. <laughs> so you know he gets very little screen time. He uh, does do all the key uh, elements to save the day. So that's great. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like was already mentioned, I really love the, the random stupid violence of the villains in this episode. <laughs> it's like the robots are constantly yeah. shooting at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's blow shit up. They they can't even wait until the island's officially bought. They already start shooting and breaking everything already. Like, it's like start... why did you just do that in the first place? It's like why why did he always bother with all these plans? You give up halfway through anyway. That that, that was it's like the 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 reason is supposedly like. Didn't, uh, Sleet just saw the hedgehogs and just went into panic mode, and he's like, "Destroy everything." Exactly. <laughs> That's kind of interesting because it's this show in general. Yeah, they're always setting up like a complicated plot. It's like, oh, do we trust or do we want to be lazy and take the easy route, or and say yes to Robotnik, or do are we going to do the right thing? But the episode never really goes about that because as soon as Sonic shows up, Robotnik immediately goes nuts and starts shoot, shooting everything. So there's never really any kind of complicated plot to solve. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, the obvious bad guys are obviously bad. I'm surprised. <laughs> it, it, it's so funny to me that like Robotic made it like very clear. It's just like, don't let Bartleby know we're gonna betray these people. And like the second shit goes sideways, it's like, yeah. By the way, we're we're, we're betraying. These people. <laughs> well, also, what what is Bartleby gonna do? He literally he he doesn't have a lot of power in this situation to stop it. So right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like. That, but on the other hand, like, they, they I, I guess, like, Bartleby is the, the one planning the resort, or whatever, or maybe he's funding the resort, I don't know, but f- for some reason, Robotnik wants Bartleby on their side, and so, to that end, they have to pretend like they're not evil for at least a little bit. <laughs> they have Bartleby on, for at they least a week, on. and I can't handle that. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, but it's like why? It's like Bartleby now that he knows he could just back out right now, or it's like, yeah, or maybe well, he can't back out at all because he signed a contract with Robotnik, and if you go back on that, then you get roboticized. So not, it's like, so I don't really see the secrecy because it's like he has no power in this situation. He has 
the money, but that's not going to do him much good if he gets roboticized, because Robotnik knows where he lives. Exactly. So, and if he's roboticized, I, I'm sure he can still organize the hotel resort, so... <laughs> <laughs> eh, oh, maybe. Well. But like that that that's the thing, is like that for one reason or another, Robotnik wants Bartleby on his side. Yeah. And Sleet just completely fucks it up by <laughs> one thing Robotnik <laughs> doesn't want to do. Yeah, I guess he just wants him on his side because oh yeah, you know, being Sonya's fiance, blah blah blah, but yeah. <laughs> that's no, I, I that's don't not even relevant. Even consider- <laughs> yeah, I don't think he even considers that. I think it's just either Bartleby's money or his, like, financial style. planning. Taste and style. So, yeah, yeah. I'd imagine it's the money thing, because, like, in previous episodes, it's kind of been established that, like, people in higher class are, like, the only ones that can, like, live all right under Robotnik's rule as long as they, you know, follow his guidelines, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of style, that kind of made me laugh when they show, like, the preview of what the resort is going to be, and it just shows a bunch of blocks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah not perfect. a coherent building at all. <laughs> yeah, our new resort, perfect for kindergartners. Indeed. Well, you know, if it, if they actually weren't going to build the resort and just roboticize everybody, then you know that that act, that those plans actually make a lot of sense. <laughs> I guess so. And otherwise, they're predicting the world building of future Sonic games. Here's what the uh, resort looks like: just floating blocks in limbo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I imagine like the guy that's showing it off is literally doing the exact same expression that Lee is doing in that shot there. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. how, here's what the next new Sonic game is going to look like. Look how colourful it is. <laughs> <laughs> there, so, yeah, Sonic toy room. How boxy it is. <laughs> Sonic just imagine, boxes. Just imagine Blocks Lee, horrible, like, opening... but the Cody and Blocks! <laughs> 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 uh, abstract shapes, my only weakness, says Roger. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and naturally, Bottle B's like face while holding that little mini statue. Like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. like, that's not the one I want. <laughs> <laughs> He's all like, oh, the fuck is this shit? <laughs> 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 N- notice also <laughs> that the, the tiny precious in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love the one where I'm sleep Dingo and Bartleby are escaping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one that's like, Mommy! He <laughs> <laughs> now puts his mouth to the full size of his head. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I guess we scared Salah off. <laughs> Hopefully, with te- hopefully it's technical issues, Salah. Yeah, is it Salah? <laughs> Come back to us, Salah. <laughs> we apologize. Well, he did have to. He did have to leave. He said, "Is it time?" But it's all. Oh, oh, oh there he is. is. Oh, there he is. He's returned. <laughs> uh, I thought you had to leave for the thingy you were doing. No. No, 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 no not yet. What was he about to say before we ended up having a laughing fit? <laughs> I don't even remember. Ah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. About the face expression or blocks? Something involving blocks, maybe. Oh, no, it was the... Uh, Bartleby's, like, replica of the Guardian statue has the, the musical notes very clearly visible on them. Oh, yeah, good point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so no Manic, one noticed Manic it. Didn't, Manic didn't even need to dig them up, because apparently those are just common knowledge. That's a very good point. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I'm they did was for nothing. <laughs> oh, well. Let's see. What else? Anyway, yeah, like we said, the episode just has awesome face expressions. I love Sonia's so look of horror with the chili dogs at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, yeah, goofy I mean, expressions. Fair, because th- those chili dogs look absolutely terrible. There's like one shot where like the the chili dog is side is like has chili on the side rather than the top. <laughs> oh yeah, it definitely look as though it's literally is on the side. It's like yeah, like the guy is actually super incompetent of actually putting the dog <laughs> and chili in the bun it's on the outside. <laughs> like yeah. it, it's so comically like disgusting looking. That, like, if it weren't for the fact that Sonic kept calling it perfection, I would think that was the joke. 
<laughs> and it just looks bad. But no, apparently. Help. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it just looks amazing to Sonic. <laughs> yeah. Well, then again, he doesn't have any taste. It's clear. Exactly. His <laughs> taste <laughs> standards is very low. <laughs> the, the, there's the one sh part where he like takes a bite out of it and it like stretches like mozzarella. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that chili dog's made of rubber. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is the worst looking chili dog that has ever been animated. <laughs> <laughs> and then, ag and then once again, Sonic's arms are blue. Oh That's yeah, there's a shot where he's uh... and not even just a quick shot either. They're, like. It lingers on him for like three <laughs> seconds. Yeah, it's the shot where his uh, stomach's growling. He's like, "Oh man, I'm starving." It's yeah. <laughs> it's Return of Blue Arm Sonic. <laughs> now we talk about the early scenes too. I, I love uh, that how Queen Alina just immediately throws off her hood while she's still in a dark alley. Like I was kind of expecting her to immediately be jumped by a lot of enemies, like robbers. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, a queen. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, like, speak speaking of that, uh, I noticed the bitch that she has, and she takes her hood off, and I'm kind of noticing the shape of her body, and I'm like, damn, like, she's like, thin as a straw, like, I don't remember her being that thin. <laughs> Maybe she's starving, but because she has to hide all the time. <laughs> all that running around, yeah. I guess so. Queen Alina with the, with the one-piece waist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna be honest though, like Sonic when he's drooling for those chili dogs, he kinda freaks me out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is the first time we see him. Dancing like a dog and I'm just like yeah. <laughs> I mean that's quite an unhealthy looking tongue there, now it's like yeah. purple or yeah. something. <laughs> what is that? A giraffe's so tongue? <laughs> Maybe the one, <laughs> maybe the animators wanted to make a hidden message that eating so much chili dog is bad for you. It's like anti uh, chili dog propaganda, so they make Sonic <laughs> as as unhealthy as possible. The chili dog is disgusting as possible. Yeah. Either that or Sonic is basically very hungry for the pig. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he wants to make him into a chili dog. Yeah. yeah. After I finish with these chili dogs, I'm coming for you next. <laughs> oh, no. And you thought Knuckles was sadistic. <laughs> I, I think there's even a shot where, like, Sonic talks with his tongue hanging out. <laughs> I'm a ventriloquist. Yeah. <laughs> and also, where, did, where in the world did he get that money from? That's a very good yeah. question. <laughs> Bored from yeah. Sonia, probably. Uh, no, from Manic. Did, maybe. Yeah. Oh, for manic, for manic, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't even look like money. It kind of just looks like a random pamphlet. <laughs> it is money, though. We, we uh, see him like right. counting the bills as he's is like, as the 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 pig is very begrudgingly shoving this coconut in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I brought it up during the synopsis, but he definitely just does not want to be here. <laughs> he does not yeah. give. Two shits about this war. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like now, you mentioned with him shoving the coconut in the bag. I'm kind of surprised with how it's like able to stay like in that shape and not be that bloated. So I guess the bag runs on TARDIS logic or something. Hey, maybe Defender <laughs> joined both factions. That's why he looks so uh, hesitant because uh, Robonic is also spying on him. Oh boy. Mm. <laughs> Do I put also, in the booby Sonic trap? Does... Yeah, go ahead. Also, Sonic doesn't even know the notice that the bag weighs more than six chili dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also, isn't it convenient that Sonic gets hungry at that moment, and then Alina happens to be passing by, and then the vendor happens to have that coconut with the message on it? <laughs> oh, my God, that is a fantastic point. <laughs> well, isn't yeah. that convenient? <laughs> Alina is, like, pulling off some Batman moves here. She knew exactly... Where's, when Sonic would be hungry, which vet chili dog vendor would be nearest to him, and paid off that chili dog vendor. Off screen, you can't see you running from hot dog vendor to hot dog vendor, like all of the, of the old city, until Sonic finally shows up. That's why she looks so thin, she has this marathon runner uh, body shape. Uh, no, no, no. I, no, I think this scene just kind of confirms in some ways, like, oh, pig, random pig guy? Yeah, he's the father. No. Uh, it's Queen Alina's husband, so yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Wait, that would explain why that would explain why yeah. Sonic loves chili dogs. Mm. Insert the Empire Strikes Back Luke. 
Because <laughs> 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 I'm just thinking, it is it's like it's awfully convenient that so- like would get hungry at that moment when Alina has a very important message to give them. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Like and immediately like the SWAT bus attacking punch. a second later. Yeah. So are you in good? So, so, so hence why the whole sort of Batman sort of stuff that you mentioned. Like she apparently does her detective skills well enough to know like when her son is feeling hungry and will go to which particular chili dog vendor just to get some food. Hey. Because I'm bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she has magic also, powers to make her sons feel hungry. Yes, yeah, Salah, go ahead. Also, out of anything. Why a coconut? Like, I-, I get, like, it's thematic because, like, oh, she's sending them to a tropical island, but, like, she could have written that message on anything. <laughs> yeah, and it would have fit better, you know, if it was on a scratch of paper or whatnot. Yeah. Like, like I could understand, like, oh, maybe not a napkin because they-, they might be likely to just throw that away without looking at it. It's got to be something they'll notice. But why a coconut? <laughs> <laughs> coconut! <laughs> because it pr- because that was the inspiration for Roger's coconut jokes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either that or just giving Sonic something to wet his whistle whilst he's eating his like chili dogs. <laughs> oh yeah. Coconut milk. <laughs> free, oh. <yeah>. free drinks. <laughs> or maybe like this is a stretch, but maybe it's like it's a it's a certain kind of coconut that only grows on a certain island. So. But then, see, but then again, that doesn't exactly the water it. because the, the name of the island is written on the coconut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that it's thematic. They're like, going to an island, here's a coconut. <laughs> but like, it could have been anything. A banana would even fit better. Yeah. <laughs> or like a branch from a, tr- a palm, like a, what a, a like some bark palm from leaves. a palm tree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think a banana actually would have been better because it's vaguely shaped like a chili dog, so Sonic would have definitely, like, taken notice of it, like, when he reaches in there to grab it. He's like, oh, yeah. no- I got a seventh chili dog free, and he's, oh, it's just a banana. Oh, but there's something written on it. But no, he's got a whole ass coconut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really shows how their mother loves them, like, giving them a yeah. stupid co- co- coconut. <laughs> Maybe Queen Elena just wanted him to eat something more healthy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Either that hey. or it's like, here you go, children, this is your birthday present, a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Son- Sonya got the dress, and uh, Sonic gets a coconut, and Manic gets nothing. <laughs> Poor Manic. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. But yeah, but of course, you gotta obviously point out the fact that, oh yeah, Speedster Island, which is obviously a spoof on the Easter Island. Yeah. So hey, there's a, there's a reason we do an Easter. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, indeed. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I did find it weird that that the uh, island was called Speedster Island and there's no speedsters there except for the chief, of course, the real. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's somehow fast enough to keep up with Sonic. <laughs> uh, I think you mean Sonic's keeping up with him. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he's like Robotnik in the classic games. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so remember, kids, if you're a fat less Robotnik and whatnot, then you could be as fast as Sonic. Yep, I bet even Big Ticket can keep up with Sonic. Yeah. Just make sure that you actually have a literal round body as opposed to an egg shape. Yeah. Because apparently yeah, yeah. that's the true <laughs> aerodynamics that you need to run that fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good times. So, yeah, it's by convoluted plot, it's an entertaining episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, the convoluted plot makes it better. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like Montu was an annoying character though, because he's just yeah. like constantly going back and forth between I should trust my father to my father has betrayed me. <laughs> or the uh, pointless yeah, subplot that he doesn't annoying. trust Sonic and Man- Manic and Mayor so many all of a sudden even though he <laughs> summoned them. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I kind of like him. <laughs> he's nice enough. Um, yeah, he can be a little annoying at times. Though <laughs> I'm sure there might be some arguments like, "Oh, he's like a fin- like his native t- speaking blah blah blah. It's offensive because 
stereotypes or I don't know. <laughs> like, hey, it's the 90s. We could easily get away with like that kind of um, Hawaiian Indian kind of stuff. But, it's you know, a fantasy yeah, world. It's just inspired. Yeah. Although I do love this shot where you see him dramatically run and then like a second later she immediately captured already. It's like, almost like a parody yeah. shot. Like, yeah! And he's captured. <laughs> Like, way to go, Montu. You, you really helped there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He, st- he stalled them long enough for his father to show up. Fair enough. Fair, Fair enough. Fair, yeah. yeah. Him being like, this is my chance to prove myself. Yeah! Oh, shit, I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was all part of my plan, because here comes my dad. <laughs> my dad. Just Tarzan doing kicking a, them in the yeah, guts. Doing nice. a possible Tarzan yodel. <laughs> yeah. Pretty epic. <laughs> So I, I can't actually find proof, but I, I am, like, pretty sure that the Chief is voiced by Blue Man Kuma, because he does sound like Flutter Guy. Oh, okay. Ah, interesting. Oh, yeah, I've never noticed that. <laughs> uh, I think I know the person in question, but it's been a while. <laughs> Maybe you'll never find out. I know. We'll never <laughs> find out. Uh, do the Sonic <laughs> Wiki. I'm just ch- Guess someone can check it out. Yeah, other than that, anything else to say? Wonderful face expressions. I love Dingo's uh, <laughs> look here. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, of course, you got to... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I checked uh, BehindTheVoiceActors.com. So, even though the Sonic Wiki didn't have a, a voice actor for the Chief, or a name for him... Uh, the behind the voice actors list Blue Man Kuma as his voice actor, and his name is Fodder. 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 Wow. Fodder. On to calls him Fodder. Fodder. Oh no. <laughs> I think my my Fodder is betraying us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so his name is Fodder. No, it's his father with an accent. <laughs> Of course. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the screenshot of the live stream right now. I love Dingo's face. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Why? <laughs> oh, shit. Blue Man Kuma voiced Unicron in Beast Wars. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Neat. It goes around. I suppose he was the closest voice to Orson Welles. <laughs> I suppose so. Or, or maybe they just didn't try. <laughs> I don't know. Well, no. I mean, Orson Welles was dead at that point. Well, yeah, but, like, it doesn't necessarily mean they were looking for a sound-alike. I know. And it didn't I'm use movies for once. <laughs> so, shall we move on to the songs? Yep. Yeah. Mobius Idol. Sadly, Luke isn't here, so I guess I yeah. have to try to get his recordings uh, yep. playing. <laughs> Gotta have that song. Indeed. Yep. <laughs> Mobius Idol. All right. So, not always what they seem from friend or foe. What do we think of this song? Is everyone ready? Uh, hey. Yep, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Then I count to three. Three, two, one, go. There you go, the song. <laughs> Alrighty, so Melty, tell us all about it. What do you think? 
Uh, I see. Um, well, I mean, it's not a bad song, but not really that good either. Uh, I, I had some nice bits here and there, but I guess in some ways it kind of feels weird that this kind of song would play like big climax, which I kind of feel like this should have played much earlier when like, you know, like, oh, you know, you know, Sonic and go, yeah, we're not the bad guys. And so they play a song and do the whole singing blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, now we're friends now. But yeah, it's, <laughs> I don't know, it just kind of feels a bit out of place seeing it play during the uh, the big climax area, so... But yeah, overall, I'd give it a three. It's just, eh. Fair enough, fair enough. Salah, your thoughts? Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's definitely not a great song. It, it's, it's not a bad song by any means, but just, eh, it, it's, it's not really important. Impressive. So I think I'm also going to give it a three. It's it just kind of, eh. All right. Fair didn't, enough. Didn't impress me that much. Sure. Elise, what do you think? I think I'll also give it a three. It's not a bad song. It's passable, I will say. Um, a little bit repetitive, but it's by no means bad. And I do like how they do try to change up the, the lyrics, at least in the verses. That's appreciated, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, it's passable, so I'd give it a three as well. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll give it a three. I kind of like the guitar riff, do, 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 but yeah, it's, indeed, like you said, it's the climax, and, and the climax felt like it should be very intense because the islands are falling and all that, and they have to hurry up and chase after them, but then it's super chill music, and the characters are not really <laughs> working at their best, and yeah, the lyrics are kind of eh, so it's a, it's a three, yeah. Ewan, what do you think? Um, I might give it a four. Because I, mean, I actually did enjoy the overall tune of it, but I suppose I do have to agree with the others. Saying, like, you know, it is kind of like an out of place song to be playing during a climactic sort of like battle to rescue the floating island from crashing into the ground. Indeed. But, but then again, that's like the problem with the, um, the songwriter, because, like, he gets the script, but yet he has to do it vaguely based on, um, what he was given. Yeah, I guess. So it's always going to turn out like it's going to either be hit or miss, and I suppose it's like a, a hit song, but just a miss in its like placement. Fair enough. Guess we can't entirely blame the song on that. Although, yeah, it's still kind of generic. All right, now I'll try to play Lucas' voice, but you have to tell me if it's actually placed because I'm not sure if this program uh, picks up. Yeah. Okay. If not, then obviously, but just give us 10 seconds at least just before we hear it. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. playing Luke's uh, voice clip now. I would give this song a four. Um, I like how funky it is. It, it kind of has that funky feel to it. And also I like how badly drawn the uh, music video is, especially how terrible Knuckles looks in some shots. All right, did that audio play? Yep. Yeah, it played. All right, excellent. Then I guess we can do it. Yeah. All right, so despite the long, de yeah, right, despite the long delay, yeah, I did play. Yeah. All righty. So Darius, Luke's uh, opinion of four. So thanks to you and Luke, uh, the song uh, got a decent score. I guess British people really love this song. Twenty. <laughs> yeah. Twenty. Is it needed twenty? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not bad. Twenty. But yeah, let's see how the next song is gonna do. <laughs> Take a chance from Head Games. Is everyone ready? Yeah, yep, ready. I'm ready. Yeah, ready. Ready. Oh. Free. Uh, sorry, you in? Sorry, just like noticing Lucas finally like popped up, although he's not joined in yet. He's just writing something at the moment. Hi, I just, just got, got back. back. Whereabouts are you? <laughs> ranking songs. Right does. Yeah, right ranking songs. Oh, I guess we'll wait for Luke to show up so we can join in. Uh... <laughs> Luke's back from London. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Hooray. 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 Oh, new sound effect. Uh. <laughs> no, that's just one of the Discord defaults. Uh, oh, yeah, Luke yeah. comes after we're done. Okay, fair enough. I have his voice clip okay. anyway. All right, song free. Uh, sorry, uh, three, two, yep. one. When you try and look at something new, you might win a 
Or you might lose, might turn out good, or it could be bad. Might be the best time you've ever had. You have to learn to take a chance. You never know what you might be missing in life. Could be something you really like. You must learn to take a chance. Hey, it might be something you really like. You must learn to take a chance. Come on, take a chance. Take a chance from Head Games. Alrighty then. <laughs> Ewan, what do you think? Uh, I I did enjoy the um, tune of it, but obviously not as good as compared to the previous one. I mean, at least this one is like there. Those like you got to learn to take a chance. It's trying but, to be Jamaican, yeah. Yeah, try to be Jamaican. And now, for some reason, I'm just getting cool running stuck in my head now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'll probably uh, give it a three points. Alrighty. Three points. Alright, Elise, your thoughts? I'll give it a four. Alright. Yeah, I like the, I like the instrumentals. I kind of like that Jamaican feel. Um, and I, I like how the song is about, you know... Taking a chance because you never know what you, you'll never know if some you trying something new might also be something good or something you like. <laughs> That's a very good moral. Yeah. You know, so if Robana mm -hmm. comes and asks you to turn your uh, island into a resort, you should say yes. Take a chance. <laughs> Take a chance. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say no to that. <laughs> but you'll have a special offer on eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bit of a bad song for the, uh, this specific episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, that well, I set myself up for that one. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, it's generally a good moral, I suppose. Fair enough. That's okay. Yeah. I've gotten used to your humor by now. <laughs> Sala, your thoughts? Well, you see, that that is exactly the thing why th this gets knocked down a bit is because it is a good message, but ruined by context. <laughs> because they are essentially telling him, you know, like, oh, you. Well, I mean, okay, so what they're telling him right now is like, hey, trust us, complete strangers. Uh, and he doesn't. He, he just runs away from them. So, like, the song doesn't even freaking work in the story. <laughs> but, like, I, I guess, like, the message of the episode is like, oh, you should trust your father because he, he just wants what's best for you. Even though what his father's trying to do is trust Robotnik. So, like, it, it's it's kind of a, a muddy moral right there. But... Overall, you know, it's it's a it's a catchy tune, you know, a good lesson. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a three. Hey, All right. at least it's better than Ryan the Last Dragon. <laughs> Could always be worse, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Melty, your thoughts? Ah, uh, that's fine. So, uh, yes, yeah, it's interesting seeing them doing a Jamaican kind of song to it. So, uh, yeah, I think I like this one a little better than the previous one. I guess it's also because this one has a little more story context. So, like, they're, you know, trying to chase after the little shit who's scared of them. It's like, oh, maybe if we play a song, he'll calm down. And then they do the song bit. Uh, but, yeah, like, neat message. It is kind of weird just <laughs> listening to the audio with Sonic's singing voice and... I've mentioned, I've mentioned a couple of times of how his singing voice in the show just sounds more like Bustin from Roger's uh, IMP series, so it's kind of funny in a way, just hearing, like, oh, a uh, Jamaican Bustin kind of voice. What the heck? <laughs> I was <Okay>. going <laughs> to Yeah, it's, I, yeah, pretty sure I mentioned it before, but yeah. Now all we need is, oh, yeah, Jamaican Bustin making shit fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, overall, like, yeah, but i give it a four. I guess just because it kind of reminds me of... Um, this one song from Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamco, which had a Jamaican song bit, you know, when they're trying to say, like, Benjamin. Remember that musical, and, yeah. 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 Oh, no, not him. How you can accuse him? He's a Benjamin is coconuts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Benjamin is sweeter than a co what? coconut tree or something. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> it's been too long. Nuts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Funny enough, I actually did that show back in high school, and despite how it's like a musical where it's all singing and whatnot, I had no lines. I was more of a minor kind of background character. Like, oh, I was one of the guys that took Joseph, and oh, I'm one of the guards, and 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. I also uh, got to play the accordion for the first time during the whole oh, bit with. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, there's a bit where uh, you know Joseph's uh, family are you know back at home and they're like sad, they're miserable, their lives are so they do like this sad like French ballet ballet thing. So yeah, I got to come up on stage dressed up as a sad mime and I played the accordion a little bit. <laughs> Only a few notes. I'm not that skilled at it. <laughs> well, at least that's one up better than I was. I was playing one of the. Uh... Or pieces of porn. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's how, that's how <laughs> miserable my heart was in the school play. <laughs> Just being one of the uh, random poor wheats of corn. <laughs> and that's why your fursona character is yellow, because you still want to be that corn. You never got over it. Uh, the corn is immortalizing you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, you. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, your. Or Roger, my score. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised you're so positive. I kind of didn't like this one, so I too. I think what kind of bothers me is like how the forceful all the moral sounds. You have to do this. You have to do this. Sounds a little too too finger ragging to me. Although I do <laughs> admit I kind of like the tropical under instruments, but I don't know. The song is kind of generic and the lyrics kind of annoy me. So uh, yeah, did tickle my fancy for once. Right. So two pointer from Roger. Oh my! Oh my! Ah, the lowest wow. I gave it so far, I think. And now Luke's thoughts are. I would give this song a three. I'm not that mad about it. I'm not a fan of the uh, characters with really dodgy Jamaican accents and whole how all the the images just squ squash and stretch all the time in the music video. Yeah, I agree with Luke there. The stretching is kind of annoying how to do that. They're kind of too uh, <coughs> cappy about those weird special effects all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. But Especially we can't blame the song for that. Sorry, you and go ahead. Yeah. No, I just like remembering when I just gave you his voice lines and you were just complaining. It's like, oh, he just mostly talks about the vi visuals as opposed to the actual song. <laughs> oh, dare he. But hey, now Luke's here, so uh, we, I can yell at him in person. Say something about the song yeah. itself, you bastard. <laughs> um, sure. 19 total. Yeah, well, it was a yeah, 19. Yeah, it's a 19. Hi, everyone. Luke, hey, welcome hey, back. Uh, Luke, Luke, sorry. <laughs> 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 sorry, I now associate you two with each other. <laughs> okay. Sorry. He the proper dissected without our good pal Luke. How was London? Oh, it was very nice. I went to the uh, Royal Air Force Museum with some friends of mine. It was really good. They got hangers for a very uh, full of um, uh, air aircrafts from um, the RAF's history, from like various biplanes and bombers and that. And there was also have some f flight simulators as well. So we went on this um, simulation ride where you're like one of those typhoon air air aircraft fighters. It was, it was pretty good. Could you play see uh, Armin, uh, the the German uh, airplanes doing it during the Blitz attacking London? <laughs> Probably no, not. No, but I did. No, but I, did I, I think they got some of the um, German plane, five planes there. Stugash, yeah, fly airplanes with the nice sound. Yeah. All right, nice. But yeah, we just finished talking about Sonic Underground, so I guess you missed out on that. But you're right on time for Fleetway, aren't you? Lucky. Yeah. So I'll be tagging out for you, Luke. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you guys. Yeah, have right. fun yeah. at the convention today. Yeah, yeah I'll try. Right, see ya. <laughs> see ya. One out and one in. The balance is restored, I guess, or something. <laughs> so, Fleetway, the hive, I suppose. Anyone wants to do a synopsis of this exciting comic book episode? <laughs> uh, I can do this one. Charmy getting some backstory. Melty, go ahead. Right, so... Oh, I'm trying to remember... Okay, so yeah, the hive. So it uh, starts off with you know Sonic still stuck in the um, with the chaotics in the special zone, and then he sees uh, Charmy. It's like, oh yeah, that little shit. And then oh, he's being dragged away. It's like, oh good. Well, then again, I guess I better go rescue the guy. So right, so he chases after him. It's like, oh, this doesn't concern. Yeah, the guards that are close by. It's like, oh, this doesn't concern you, rodents. This is a royal business. And then, um, <laughs> apparently, uh, Charmy manages to talk him into it. Or at least, the, oh, you know, the rules say that I can have a friend. It's like, hey, hey, I ain't no friend. But he <laughs> goes along with it anyway. So after going through um, <laughs> the, the islands of 
Rubik's cubes and hexagons or whatever they're past, and they make it to uh, the hive. So, you know, lots of uh, bees there. So instead of making honey, they're actually making gold. And so it's like, oh, you idiot, no one can make gold. It's like, oh, well, we can, because, you know, special zone shenanigans. <clears throat> so, yes, yeah, so they go and they meet the queen and the cares. And then, of course, we get the big reveal, like, oh, my God, Charmy's actually a prince. And it's like, oh, why didn't you tell? It's like, oh, I, you know, I didn't want the guys to know. You know, I just want to be, you know, have some fun, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, the queen's, um... Not really happy about Charming running off. So it's like, oh, you're going to stay here and do your princely duties and blah, blah, blah. And I guess, uh, yeah, I guess they brought him in at a good time because, oh, no, here comes the, the angry wasp of, uh, hi yeah, the hive's arch enemies, the, the wasp that are trying to overthrow the kingdom or take over. Mongolian so, yeah, wasp or something. Kind of reminds yeah, you of uh, <laughs> Genghis Khan and all that. Yeah, Genghis Khan, the Huns, yeah. <laughs> so, right, they're charging into the hive. It's like, oh, we'll take over. It's like, oh, crap, what are we going to do? It's like, oh, send in the soldiers. And, <laughs> well, that didn't go so well. It's like, ah, shit, what do we do? It's like, oh, and Charm's like, oh, you know. No, it's Song's like, oh, yeah, I'll uh, help out, you know. And so, yeah, the wasp leader comes in. It's like, oh, I'm going to take over this hive. And then Sonic uh, quickly zooms around and steals all the weapons. But he's like, ah, oh, you are a fool, Hedgehog. He charges after him. It's like, nope. <laughs> So it gives, you know, spins him around and everything. It's like, ah, you know, you'll be sorry, Hedgehog. I'll get you for this. And then, um, yeah, Sonic's like, oh, you know, yeah, we surrender. It's like, and the Queen's like, what? It's like, oh, Charmy's like, oh, don't worry. Sonic's got a ding, diddly, dong, ding plan. It's like, Sonic's like, yeah, I think. So, yeah, they're dragged out into uh, the opening, and it looks like they're about ready to be, like, pushed off and whatnot. But then Sonic uh, runs around this uh, chute and <laughs> creates some kind of, like, cycle and whatnot and just shoots the wasp uh, all out into space. So now they're just stranded out there. And the queen's uh, thankful. It's like, oh, Sonic, you're welcome here anytime, blah, blah, blah. But you, Charmy, you're going to stay here. But Charmy's like, oh, you know, like, since, um, you know, an outsider saved us, we may have, um, you know, he may ask for whatever. So it's like, okay, Sonic, what do you ask for? And it turns out Sonic just wanted Charmy back to the Chaotix. <laughs> Thinking that Sonic had a change of heart, but nope, he just says, like, no, because if I if they found out, they'd probably kill me if you left. And then it ends. It's a bit confusing. Well, <laughs> on his thoughts on Charmy, like, he does nothing but hate yeah. him all the time, and yet he keeps helping him for some reason. I guess yeah, Sonic still has a just, heart of gold. Yeah, he basically, it's just his conscience being like... I really absolutely hate this guy, but I know if I don't do anything, I'm going to regret it down the road, <laughs> and I'm going to regret it later on for rescuing him anyway. <laughs> so it's like a dilemma for him. It's like, what, do I, what the hell do I do? Do I leave him to his fate, or do I rescue him? Poor Charmy. <laughs> I love Charmy bashing at this one. Yeah. Well, hey, at least he's giving some backstory for once. I mean, the games never gave him anything. Yeah, games never did, unless unless there's, like, something in the Knuckles Chaotix manual that mentions something. I know they said he's, like, 16, like, originally. Uh, but, yeah, it's just the... both. Yeah, it's both Archie and Fleetway Sonic that give him a backstory. And surprisingly, they're the same. They're the whole deal about, oh, Charmy's a prince that comes from a colony of bees and blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. I, mean, I guess it makes sense. I mean, bees do have yeah. a queen, right? Or if it's our only yeah, they're... <laughs> yeah, of course, the only major difference is that in Fleetway Sonic, like, oh, you know, the Kingdom of the Bees, yeah, they're there, and they're living fine and whatnot, even with the pesky wasp things. While on Archie Sonic, on the other hand, Robotnik killed them all. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's not very nice. Yeah, so, yeah, Robotnik killed them all, so now it's just Charmy and his uh, fiance Saffron that survived, because, <laughs> and before it gets weird out, no, like, Archie Sonic, well, the old timeline was going with the whole 16 bit that Knuckles Chaotix established. So this was way before they tried to establish the game version. Alright. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I do like how cool the uh, wasps look, 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 look like barbaric Mongolians. Yeah, it's pretty good yeah, luck. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty cool design. But yeah. Of course with Fleetway. Yeah. For some reason, one of them seems kind of almost resembles Knuckles for some reason, <laughs> just because of the muzzle he has. Yeah, he kind of does. <laughs> Knuckles. Then Knuckles turned to a bee. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> ah. Man, I yeah, absolutely love the beginning where Sonic is just walking around and just sees a charm and oh, Charmy's being kidnapped, and he doesn't even bat an eye if he thinks that's weird. He's just like, oh, Charmy's being kidnapped. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> like it's just a normal day occurrence. It's like, oh, well, there goes Charmy being kidnapped again. Oh, well. <laughs> it's so, it's yeah. so casual. It make me laugh. 
<laughs> Especially with how, like, you know, where, like, Charm is saying, like, oh, I'd never tell the uh, Kertex I'm a prince because I just want them to treat me normally. So, and so it's like, so you like being yelled at? It's like, nah, they just pretend to yell at me. And, like, Sonic's saying, you poor deluded fool. <laughs> Sonic's not very nice now. Yeah. He's well, a... not literally to his face, he just thinks it because he's like, I don't have the heart to tell him, so I'll just call him a fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm not sure why, though, when I was, like, look, looking at the comic first time round, was, like, why the heck the hive looks as though it was drawn by a different artist, like, yeah, you know, the writer who always usually does the artwork, I keep forgetting his name. Uh, it, no, it's not. I do like how Nigel looks. looks. Mm. Yeah, it looks yeah. pretty cool. That does look like something like, you know, the uh, writer Nigel would more Nigel because Kitchen. that's kind of more his art style. Yeah, Nigel Kitchen. Yeah, Nigel right. Kitchen's up there. Could be, sure. Could be. I don't know. Could, Looks like, could like saying, well, how the high, should a high be drawn? It's like, oh, draw it like this. And it's like literally just copied like his artwork. Could be, like, yeah. <laughs> that's Nigel enjoys all the uh, pointy angles. That's with his art style. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense for uh, bees and all that with the hexagon, so I know that's what a uh, beehive looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, having stingers and all that. Yep, mm. and that too. Mm. Makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, well, now that I'm looking at the island, it almost kind of looks like the whole thing is made out of, like, cardboard boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that was the case. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, Charmy's Kingdom. Charmy's Kingdom. It's only a model. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know what it is. It's the Blue Peter Tracy Island. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that old thing. But, I'm not sure why though, but with the uh, one B soldier with like the uh, little tash, for some reason, I keep imagining him being French. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> It's it, it, just because of like the actual random cash, and I'm just automatically think, oh, he's French. Yeah. Even though he doesn't speak French, I'm just imagining him with a French accent. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are in deep trouble. Oh my god, we must go back to the tunnel and rescue there. You massagist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> prince, uh, prim, you must return to the kingdom, you little bastard. <laughs> sure, why not? It's like John Cleese doing a French accent. You smell like elderberries. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably got I the queen going. Yeah. Yeah, no, go, go ahead, Luke. I was going to say, like, you, you, you look at the queen, and she's like the kind of person who would be like, off with his head. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah she does kind of have that look, yeah. Very, a very Victorian look there, yeah. Mm. Exactly. And Elise, what were you saying? I was saying, I'm surprised, actually, that Charmy is a prince. I did not know that. Until this episode, it took me by surprise <laughs> too. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, it's <laughs> only in the uh, Archie and Fleaway Sonics does Charmy have the title of being Prince. I mean, I, yeah. I knew about Saffron. Um, I, I knew her. Like, I didn't know her name, but I did know of her. But yeah, this is like the first time I'm hearing about this side of Charmy's story. Hmm. <laughs> kind of interesting, although I don't yeah. suspect it's coming up much. I mean, he doesn't really do anything with him being a prince. Yeah, I, I think this is the only time the whole deal about Chami being a prince is brought up. He just wants to be normal. Ish. <laughs> yeah. As far as someone who's hated by everyone can be normal, yeah. But he's oblivious <laughs> to it. Lucky <laughs> yeah. Poor Chami gets no respect. I kind of like have this head canon as to why the Chaotix keep him around. Yeah. This head canon is that Chami is a pickpocket. Ah. Sure, could yeah. be. Well, you wouldn't think so, being uh, so hyperactive and loud all the time. Like, you have to be kind of sneaky to be a pickpocket, but who knows? Maybe well, it's kind of like Manic, where it's like he throws their attention to one side, and then he, you know, ah, he good swipes thinking. their stuff. Good thinking. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the Chaotix keep him around. It's because he's a pickpocket. Although you'd think Espia <laughs> would make a better pickpocket being invisible and all that. 
Oh, yeah. Maybe he's too clumsy yeah, for that. Yeah. And they could have had him steal that DVD player in that Sonic Echo episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least that steal was nice enough to leave it <laughs> But he did steal the newspaper. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Our detective thieves. How dare they. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I think the reason why SBO doesn't pick pockets because he's got a moral code against stealing, but then I remembered the DVD player. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, at least SBO was nice enough to leave behind a note saying, oh, I'm borrowing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but then again, only in the Japanese version, because, yeah, that whole scene was cut from the English dub. Which I don't mind. It kind of feels a little pointless, and I'm gonna be honest. That whole episode <laughs> was pointless. It was just four wall breaking. I only like the ending, but uh, yeah, oh. that was the whole. It's like, oh yeah, the chaotic get to establish, like, yeah, we're the fourth wall breakers in the mostly in the English dub, blah blah blah. <laughs> Unlike in the Japanese dub, especially since that's the only episode in the whole first two seasons where it even showed up, and then they don't show up again <laughs> yeah, until season two. There, <laughs> yeah, they get one and only appearance in season two. At least, at least they're a little active in season three. They didn't even show up when everyone went out. But yeah, we're going off a tangent I, I, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, Elise. <laughs> I was going to say, I love the Chaotix and Sonic X. Yeah, they, they were, were fun. Yeah. They were my favorite part about Season 3, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Fair enough. Did it bring in the fun energy? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember the scene where they appeared in space, and Tell sees them, he's like, shoot that thing out of the sky! Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Chaotix. And then they get, they, they get beat up as they're trying to get to the bridge <laughs> to talk to everybody. And I just love the dynamic with Vector and Vanilla. It's such a nice little touch. I kind of miss those kind of interaction with modern Sonic. You don't really have much uh, interconnection between the side characters and all that. It's a bit of a shame. Oh, well. Yeah. But yeah. yeah fun could comment. also be another reason why Charmy got kicked out of his colony. Because <laughs> he kept stealing from the, his fellow bees. Sure, why not? <laughs> stealing all the honey. <laughs> now stealing all gold. the gold in this oh, case. Gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're making gold. Yeah, liquid gold. Honey. So he's a pickpocket and a klepto. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> Poor Charmy, we're just piling up the vices. <laughs> right, shall we move again, on? Oh uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead, yeah. Lilies. No, I was just gonna say again. That's just my own head of cannon. Sure, why not? I mean, that's more than. Uh, <laughs> official information we got. So let's yeah. go with that for now. Why not? Prince Charmy, indeed. So, Captain Plunder, Shanghai. Is this yes, I want to do this one. Of course. <laughs> right, go okay. ahead. Okay. okay, the story of Captain Plunder in the st in Shanghai. Um, the crew, Captain Plunder and his crew have managed to make it to the New Tech City in the Special Zone because they managed to affix a star post to his steering wheel. And now they can go anywhere in the universe. They feel like they'll become the most feared pirates in history. And um, Captain Plunder's like, right, we're going to start and by um, press ganging some people. So go out there and press gang some people for me. So what? So in the city, they come across um, Dr. Speckle. So they thought, well, he seems easy enough to steal, to kidnap. So they go and beat him up, put him in a sack. And... Uh, and um, so, like, I'll oh, take the ship. And it says, "Oh, okay, then." Um, so, but he's a bit disappointed that he's only got one person. He says, "I'll oh, chuck him in the hole then." So he goes and has a nice feast, and he goes, "Oh, I, f I fancy some chucky bars now. Go and get me some, Simpson." <laughs> so, so whilst uh, Simpson goes and says hello to his crew, and the crew says to piss off, he goes into the hold and finds out that Doctor Speckle ate his entire. Captain Plunder's entire chocolate supply. <laughs> so, it's, this pisses off Captain Plunder so much that he decides to make him walk the plank. And he goes, I'm Dr. Proctor, Proctor Speckle. And Fulton's like, We ever heard that name before? And so he gets fed to the sharks. And whilst he's drowning, he gets to open his transforming serum, which he manages to drink. And Captain Blood is wondering why the, the sharks are taking so long to eat him. And they all apparently they all got eaten up by Mr. Fry, who's about to attack the ship. So, so um, he's, um, as he's attacking the ship, Captain Blood's like, Attack, you scurvy swabs! 
And um, he asked Phil to do it as well, but Phil has to remind him that he's dead, so he can't really do anything. <laughs> so uh, so it's, all right, then tear him a bit apart. I'll use his lungs a tea cozy. But uh, apparently Mr. Five beat the absolute, absolute shit out of his entire crew and was about to obliterate the ship. So, um, so uh, then Mr. Fry says, right, show me to your galley and with this shark I'll... Uh, I'll cook. I'll cook some sh- shark f- up to you. And um, I thought, oh, I thought you were, were Doc Proctor Speckle. Says, no, no, we're two different people. I'm, I'm Mr. Fry. He says, all right, all right. So um, uh, Simpson decides to befriend Mr. Fry, and they all have a slap up uh, shark feast and um, as a cook, and you know, they're having a nice little chat and saying like how much he hates Speckle and uh, um, and so. Um, then uh, what happened to the rest of the serum and apparently <laughs> all the sharks drank it and they've now turned into street sharks <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah <laughs> so uh, now uh, the uh, not street sharks are about to attack Captain Plunder and the crew but um, the crew are like really terrified so Mr. Fry says I'll, I'll take care of these uh, sharks and so uh, he goes in and Beats them all up and um, <laughs> filters spits up. Oh, I can't look. That's that's a high quality sale. But um, Mr. Fry turns back into Proctor Speckle and tries to make a a queen getaway. But I think um, uh, so, so I think he doesn't know. If he tells the different people or they're the same people. And he's a bit annoyed that Simpson is also involved. So uh, he has to get out his trusty shark repellent, which is a giant mallet. <laughs> and decides to bash the street sharks until they're absolutely flattened. So um, he turns them away and says, oh, we've got some sharks. And um, he, get, he fishes out Simpson and all the sharks are turning back to normal and um, says, all right, right, let's. we've got some sharks. Let's get some uh, my other um, chocolate supply. But as Simpson waits to get them, it, they're all gone as well as... Uh, Proctor Speckled is, is making a clean getaway in the barrel eating the uh, other chocolate supply. Yeah, what a crazy With, uh, episode. Uh, Curly saying, why that scurvy good for nothing, slime sucking build rat of a lousy. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love those parody curse words. Yeah, fun, fun episode, fun story. Yeah, although I wonder why we should include it, because since no Sonic characters show up. But yeah, it was a fun well, episode. He's technically a, 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 involved with the Sonic characters. That is and true, like, and pirate, and pirate, pirate characters are cool. It yeah, was a very pirate. fun episode, yeah, with all the mutated sharks and all that. <laughs> Gotta love all the face expressions. I mean, I'm kind of surprised they went about the Shanghai concept, because it's not a really kid-friendly element. Of it. Of course, it was actually a thing in the past, right? Yeah, Where ships, yeah. ships actually kidnap uh, people just to force them to work on as yeah, a crew even member. Sa- even Royal Navy sailors used to do it as well. Ooh, even a Navy. Yeah, oh yes. They would, they would, they, they, they would try and find people like coming out of the tavern, being absolutely drunk, and they just bash them and just take them, take them aboard. Yeah, fun. Yeah, this is <laughs> nice to show the pirates actually doing um, pirate things. Another thing is, of, of, of what I understand is that pirates don't really or rarely make pe- their prisoners walk the plank. That's usually very something that was done in stories like Peter Pan. Fair what enough. they do do is kill haul them. Oh. And if you know what eel calling is, it's not very nice. Yeah, Tied to a rope nice. behind the ship or something? Yes. Just tie them to a rope, drag them under the ship, which was completely full of barnacles, and they just go right through Ooh. it. Yeah, I'm uh, glad I don't live in that time span, because uh, <laughs> I'm not a man of the sea. <laughs> then again, I'm not the type to go to a tavern and get drunk anyway, so I guess uh, I, I, was, I would just be a peasant. If I was born in that time, <laughs> but yeah, fun pirate story. I yeah. I love how uh, the Simpson looks out of place with this uh, Looney Tunes antics yeah. all the time. <laughs> and his wacky uh, Felix the Cat shenanigans. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like the bit where he raises the top of his head and says, "Hello, sh- fellow shipmates," and all the shipmates are like, "Oh, just drop dead." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely yeah. It's a poor guy. He's so upbeat and chipper. Poor Simpson. But yeah, just kind of find it funny of like how Plunder has his like own shark repellent, which is just a big hammer that he just keeps <laughs> on, like on deck, ready for 
any moment, like, sharks would end up getting on board the boat somehow and then causing a problem. <laughs> yeah, this comic's really it's dark like on the sharks. <laughs> this comic's really dark mm-hmm. on the sharks. A lot of sharks die in this one. It's pretty, yeah. uh, pretty dark for a kid's <laughs> cartoon. <laughs> especially yeah, with how one, especially with how, like, one whack with one of the sharks and then he loses much of his teeth. Yeah, that was a pretty graphic shot, jeez. Yeah, and I have wondered if the, the mutated sharks were partly inspired by the street sharks. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be the first uh, pop culture reference yeah. they make. Yeah, Fleetway Sonic loves throwing in a lot of uh, characters that are like spoofs of other uh, pop culture yeah. stuff. Yeah, which we'll be getting to shortly. I'm just curious <laughs> oh, if yeah. Street Sharks was. Oh, yeah, it aired in like 1994, apparently. Mm. So it is so, yeah, possible there are past that time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I love this comic. It's so over the top British. You're gonna love it. Even yeah. the dialogue and all that. Blimey, he scuffed a lot. And all those face expressions. <laughs> it's so. Uh, <laughs> it's so British. <laughs> and you got Doctor Speckles like you'll be hearing from my solicitor as he eats all the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> as well, just seeing him like try to tiptoe away during the fight, like. Mm. Hopefully no one will see me. Oi, bagger. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, yeah. But Mr. Fry also looks pretty awesome. For either. But the thing I like the most is this Captain Plunder's face when you get the, the title screen at the beginning. From Here's your hero, and he just goes... Rah! <laughs> That's his <laughs> interaction <laughs> picture. I love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so silly things I love the most. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's still funny like how they just keep using Nigel's like Original picture drawing. Into the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta love those face expressions, yes. But yeah, kind of weird to set a pirate story in what's supposed to be like New York City. I mean, New York City shows up in a later comic where it makes more sense, but here's kind of random. Like, why are you suddenly going with a New York City aesthetic? It's kind of out of place yeah. with a pirate oh, story. As you said, he, like, he's, he's able to travel dimensions, so he's able to go to. The new tech city, which is going to be featured a lot in future stories. I suppose yeah. if it, yeah, it makes good sense on the, to really introduce the fact he's actually jumping dimensions. It kind of also makes it look like uh, Treasure Planet from Disney too, with all the uh, dimension hopping. Yeah, because Plunder does kind of mm. resemble Long John Silver. Of course. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I guess it is. It has a bit of a Treasure Planet feel to it, except a lot darker and Britisher. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, shall we move on to the next? Yeah, oh, yeah the uh, some last minute edition with this one. Oh, yeah, we'll do Christmas first? Or uh, b- uh, Head Zone, Head in the Clouds first? Uh, oh, uh, right, right, I was thinking a different yeah. one, yeah. No, oh, this one looks well. so weird. Yeah, very <laughs> yeah. weird, yes. The uh, Head in yeah. the Clouds one, I'll do that one. Alright, you and go ahead. Yeah, because I will. Okay. Two months ago in Citadel Robotnik, Robotnik angrily hears the news that Sonic is trapped in the special zone and orders the bearer of bad news to being turned into a badnik. Grom is confused why Robotnik isn't pleased to hear Sonic is no longer in Mo- on Mobius. The fat doctor responds that he is pleased but wanted to be the one that got rid of Sonic. Grimer says that the citizens believe Sonic will one day return, thus Robotnik tells Grimer of his plan to remind Planet Mobius who is the one in charge, where he wants a huge rocket built in his image, launched into orbit of Mobius, to being a regular reminder on who is in charge, and being the perfect symbol of his power over the planet. Grimer does some calculations and believes they can get the rocket ready for launch in six months, but Robotnik demands it being done in two. So two months later, the rocket is on the launch pad. Grimer suggests a few more tests, but Robotnik orders it for an immediate launch. The rocket then launches off into the sky, but its flight path is becomes wonky and starting to splutter, with it then coming down to Mobius with a big explosion. Robotnik believes it to being sabotaged and orders Grimer to bring him a full report on what happened to the rocket. Next morning, Grimer visits a sulking Robotnik in his office to give him the report. While Robotnik assumes it was sabotaged, Grimer however says the failing rocket was due to the many cutbacks to construction materials and no testing. Though Robotnik tells Grimer that the official report for the news was sabotage. Grimer says, so you want to lie about it? And Robotnik responds, the official word is that I never make mistakes. Sometimes saying lies is all part of being evil. 
Got yeah. surprised Grimer didn't already know that. And it dun. turns out Robotnik was Elon Musk the whole time. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Wow. Well, I haven't seen an Elon Musk <laughs> spaceship fly around yet, but uh, if he ever makes one, I hope he has the same face expression as Robotnik, yes. <laughs> what, a rocket made in his image? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that face expression. <laughs> oh, God, I can imagine it now. <laughs> I love the face expressions like... in this point. Yeah. I love yeah, sad Robotnik, fun. too, when he sees a yeah. thing splutter. <laughs> So it's like, uh, something's wrong, Grimer. Is it supposed to be doing that? <laughs> he looks so sad. Well, I would, Poor Robotnik. Yeah. But I would have found it funnier, though, if, like, the rocket actually landed on them, especially considering how the speech bubble somewhat indicates, like, it's heading towards them. <laughs> that would have been nice. The final chapter of Fleetway. That's how Robotnik ends. <laughs> Crushed by his own spaceship. With his own stupid <laughs> face on it. I'll, uh... Of the panel where he's sulking in his office, just a normal desk, wood desk, and there's a couple of pens in a pot and one is a toothbrush. Yeah, I was thinking that. What was there? A toothbrush in his office? <laughs> How random. Has to brush his teeth as he works. <laughs> yeah. Hey, at least Robotnik uh, encourages good hygiene. That's good. Mm. But sorry, you and yeah. what was that? No, no. I ruined your joke. this artist. I think this artist just really loves to draw Robotnik sulking. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just like, Hello, Dr. Robotnik, go away, Grimer, I'm not in a mood. <laughs> but I got the report, fine. <laughs> uh, for running. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Grimer just like, just randomly just like, having his hands behind his back and just smiling as he looks up at the speech bubble. Like, oh yeah. I think he's supposed to be rolling his eyes in irritation. Ah, oh, of course. Yeah. But yeah, it kind of looks yeah, like I he's looking that. at the speech balloons. Yeah. Yes. I also noticed he looked a bit extra fat when asking about the report. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like bloated with excitement. A more pompous uh, <laughs> body uh, shape. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta oh, love the yeah. artwork. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Especially. Yeah, especially of course. Yeah, and of course that poor monkey dude, apparently being the bearer of bad news to a botnik, is like, "Oh wait, I don't want you in my life anymore." Okay, <laughs> just gets yoinked away by the brutish trooper. <laughs> and then Grimer himself acts like a monkey in the final panel of the first page. We go, hey, "I don't yeah. get it. What's yeah. happening?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's like> monkey. <laughs> yeah, monkey. <laughs> Yeah, love yeah. the artwork. Yeah, but, yeah. but who wouldn't want to have their face being turned into a rocket? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a Musk would. <laughs> yeah. A Donald Trump would. Mm. The Trump rocket. <laughs> 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 well, I'll say in the chat, just type down, like, who do you think would have their face being turned into a rocket? <laughs> I'd be interested to know. Luke, someone in the chat asked you if you've seen the live-action Avatar The Last Airbender series. Actually, I know it's not as good, would, would have been as good as the um, the cartoon series, but you would have to admit it is miles better than the uh, god-awful movie by M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> well, it's easy to yeah, yeah. cut that one. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hoping that they will make um, future series because I want to see how they would do Toph. Yeah, well, I guess uh, you'll find out. I have to admit, I've never seen Avatar Last Airbender. I did, although I did play the video games, <laughs> weirdly enough. But, uh, so well, I did watch a couple episodes actually. I mean, I've been interested into it, but I don't have the time. Oh, yeah, I remember watching a few episodes of um, the original Avatar cartoon series. Like, yeah, good stuff, and yeah, live action film that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, poor I'm not sure. Yeah. I would say it kind of has the same intrigue as Star Wars because the uh, the benders are a bit like. The people with the force and the the uh, fire the fire nations a bit like the evil empire. Sure, kind of resembles it. Yeah. Right. Shall we move on to the next Fleetway comic? The final oh, yeah. one for today. A Christmas wish, even though it's not Christmas, but I guess since it involves Christ and it's Easter, so uh... yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a holiday. Christmas. It's a holiday. Yeah. Sure, let's go with that. Yeah. Basically telling the Christmas story being like Jesus' birth and then telling it on Easter, which was his death and resurrection. So perfect! I suppose <laughs> so. 
And I guess in some place yeah. in the world it still snows. Anyway, yeah, a Christmas wish. When... It is a... Yep, I can do this one. Alright. Because it involves yeah, comic so... book heroes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's just a quick one. And well, then I already have the pages up on my end. <laughs> yep, good. So... Right, so yeah, so Sonic's still stuck in the special zone. It's like, hey, you know, at least it's Christmas time and people are in the festive spirit and apparently their zone also has a version of Santa Claus. And so, yeah, then it comes to this random family of like, oh, this kid's got like this uh, prison and he's got this costume and it's based off of his favorite superhero, Spider-Man, I mean, insect guy. <laughs> so yeah, he puts it on and he's like, wow, this is cool, best present, man, I wish I had the uh, special powers. And then suddenly a random, like, insect bites him and he's like, ah, the random insect bit me. He's like, wait, that means I have superpowers, wee! And he, <laughs> <laughs> he freaking jumps out the window and of course he falls to his doom like, ah! <laughs> but then, but just, but just now, Charmy was passing by, like, oh, I got your kid, man. I don't want to think about what would have happened if I had, uh, didn't show up. Oh, don't diddly diddly die Flanders, yeah. Now, I love to imagine this stuff always happens, but then there's no Charmy around to save them. <laughs> this kid's randomly jumping out of windows all the time. <laughs> and that's why we don't see kids in the special zone. There you go. <laughs> right. So right. So yeah, the cha uh, the chaotics are there. It's like, ah, hey, Karen, what are you doing, jumping out of windows? Like, oh, like I thought I was, you know, I was uh, bitten by a radioactive insect. So yeah, I'm a superhero just like you guys. And it feels like, you know, it takes more than a costume to make you a superhero. And then, uh, oh shit, here comes a bad guy. It's like, oh, fear the wrath of the blazer. And then the little kids like, oh, don't worry, this is a job for insect pup. But then Sonic uh, quickly grabs him out of the way before he gets singed. And so, yeah, Sonic comes in and dumps a b well, <laughs> speeds by and, like, flings a bunch of snow at him, which uh, douses out his flames, like, ah, without my flames, I can't be, you know, powerful. And then, of course, the Chaotix just punch him in the face, like, there, that's it. <laughs> there, job done. <laughs> so, so Sonic uh, runs off to find the kids, like, oh, I just wanted to be, you know, a superhero, but... Yeah, I wanted to be a hero, but you guys wouldn't let me. He <laughs> he. And Sonic's like, you know, there's more safer ways to be like a superhero. So he lets the kid um, help out with the chaotics and delivering uh, Christmas presents to the children at the hospital, who, oh. who most likely tried to, yeah, who most likely tried to fly out the window but failed. A <laughs> 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 oh, for failed superhero kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, they're delivering that, and then Sonic's like, "Oh, here's a gift for you, kid. A radio, yeah, a bug spray." It's like, "Oh, thanks." And then it just ends. Oh, that's terrible. You get Christmas presents and bug spray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least it wasn't a rock. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> Survival kit for jumping out of windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird to suddenly see like the special zone represented by an actual city because so far it's always been very abstract. My man, I, I love the yeah. first uh, play uh, the picture, the the panels. It's very uh, atmospheric when Sonic yeah. just uh, going around in the Christmas town. It looks beautiful. Yeah, the new tra New Tech City is supposed to be like um, New York in the MCU with all these different heroes going around. <laughs> and also before that, if if this insect guy is like around, you probably think that like, he would be. Um, there when the blazer shows up is like no he's probably somewhere else or something <laughs> fighting yeah, the other weird. fantastic four i guess <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of weird because at first i thought this insect guy was just like oh comic book character blah 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 but in the flash man like no he does see him like going like shooting webs and whatnot it's like okay so he is real but <laughs> i guess he was off during the holidays i suppose so i'm kind of disappointed to just call him insect man i was kind of hoping for a more funnier parody name just kind of very yeah. lazy at least call him yeah. Like, yeah. like Mosquito Man or Duck Man. It's a kind of uh, made me think of a, jo this, a, a joke where, like, in the MCU, like, you've got all these heroes coming, um, existing together, and apparently, like, if a certain supervillain um, turns up, they, they can't get involved because it's not their movie. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. That would be funny. We had this before that time. What was it, Ewan? Uh, just kind of wondering why Richie would basically have his bedroom window wide open on like a cold Christmas day doesn't make much sense yeah, <laughs> yeah what's up with that guess he was already so planning he... to jump even before he got bitten by the insect <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I <can> fly <laughs> well I wouldn't be surprised considering like the, that pose that the mum's doing it's like not. it's almost like she's about to punch her kid she's like <laughs> <"I'll be laughs> you <laughs> <Jeez>. not again <laughs> 
I'm just gonna <laughs> punch him out. It's gonna punch him and send him flying out the window. <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most extreme uh, I've heard you in a while. Oh fuck, I did not expect that to be that hilarious. <laughs> I also thought it interesting that the comic book found it necessary to add like an extra note for the readers. Like, oh by the way, you uh, read us this comic book, you should not jump out of an open window. Like, do you British yeah. people really need reminders for that? <laughs> you and did you well, read this and thought, oh yeah, of course, I should not do that, huh? I didn't consider that. <laughs> well, not really, yeah. I know. But I definitely can imagine like the odd like one youngster that would basically live on top of an apartment block yeah. that would be like, I... Ooh, maybe I could do that myself. <laughs> I was being my insect today. I can imagine <laughs> like after people weeding Peter Pan or watching the uh, Disney movie, they'll try and leap out the window with happy thoughts thinking they could blind. <laughs> yeah. uh, Just like that robot chicken clip. Like, oh, I yeah. can fly! Oh, dear, mate. Boom humor. But yeah, the yeah. blaze of just being there and just like only doing one cool move and then Sonic just like immediately beats him. It's like, no, my only weakness, why do I have to do this during a snow day? <laughs> uh, yeah. in, in the words of comic book guy, worst super villain ever. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Also, he, also, he's named after a school jacket. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I'm the blazer. <laughs> I'm a cool fashion accessory. <laughs> In which SBO and Mighty just basically just show what they feel about him. Punch. Punch. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun comic. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I love the atmosphere of the first panels. Pretty awesome. <laughs> Very Christmassy. Yeah. But more importantly, Isaac. what happens to all the kids when they basically jump out windows? They end up in the <laughs> hospital for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> but at least they get it, Buck Spray. So they don't think they're turning to superhero again. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like the wall decorations in the hospital as well. The little uh, snowman and all that. And a lamp, yeah. uh, lampshade yeah. above the clock that is random <laughs> um, oh yeah yeah wall decoration yeah wall decoration yeah no but it's a oh, lamp oh, that's a, oh, above no, the it's clock a what is that no it's, no, a, it's a bell oh it's yeah, a bell okay yes yeah, so, well, yeah like a Christmas in. bell a like wrapped in Christmas foiled, bell okay yeah like a foiled <laughs> bell decoration I think yeah it's one of those like paper things that like you know you open them up and it kind of spreads this uh, 3D and it's like oh it's supposed to look like a bell you know Christmas bell la 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 yeah all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I'm noticing is that like, pig kid apparently, according to the graph, he's not doing very well. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, well, no. sorry, Bobby, we got to amputate. <laughs> <laughs> Although the nurse doesn't look too concerned. She's uh, quietly calling the butcher shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> it's getting dark. <laughs> And that's how the random guy from Sonic Underground makes his profits in uh, making chili dogs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We're never going to let that go, you know. <laughs> we'll keep on doing it forever. Yeah, forever! <laughs> Good times. <sighs> Well, anything else left to say about this Christmas adventure? Uh, remember, kitties, don't jump out windows and use bug spray. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Either that, or you could just reference like an old line from Roger's animation of where he parodied Jackass, where it's like, "Remember, kids, don't try this at home unless you're doing it for your grandma." <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Good times. Oh, yeah. yeah, what else? Uh, I was surprised Sonic 3D Blast showed up in the reviews and had a very high score. And they almost nearly called it perfect, which kind of surprised yeah. me because it's kind of a boring game. But okay, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I suppose it's just, 
Dude, yeah, the Sonic like magazine, they have to be super positive about the Sonic games, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Graves! Graves has yeah. got it all! Graves, tears of farewell for the Sonic on the Mega Drive. <laughs> Reading the review is so weird, because first they say, oh, uh, platformers cannot never be in 3D. It's like, oh, uh, I think at this yeah, time bullshit. Mario 64 and Banjo Kazoo is already out, but okay. Yeah. And, those, and they made another, oh yeah, they said that Chemical Plant Zone is in this game. I was like, oh, you weren't paying attention. I, I assume. <laughs> Pretty sure that it wasn't uh, Sonic Generations yet. Because now, yeah, sure, now Chemical Plant Zone would have been in it. But back then they didn't do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back then they were a little more original with the uh, zones and level designs in the two yeah. thousands before the nostalgia pandering took over. Yep, but it was kind of neat to see Discworld show up as a review. Yeah. Point and click yeah. adventure game, very British, of yeah. course. Yeah, I played that as well. Yeah, I remember too. finding it very difficult. I had it on the rented it from the uh, on PC from my local <laughs> library. I remember I had very a lot of difficulty trying to find all the parts for the. Um, Dragon Detector, and then I read it out again and uh, managed to get a walkthrough. Nah. It's not an easy game, no. Mm -hmm. puzzles no. So I also like the voice acting as well, as you've got like Tony Robinson and Eric Idle. I remember how disappointed I was that they didn't get Eric Idle to play um, Windswind in the live action Color of Magic series. That was a shame, yeah. I guess it was too expensive. Yeah. Oh well. Mm. But yeah, I definitely remembered. You know, playing Sonic 3D when it first came out. I didn't own a Mega yeah. Drive, so I just played it over a friend's house. But the one thing I was like more mesmerized was like the uh, seeing like an FMV cutscene playing at the beginning. I was mm. like, I want to rewatch that again. It's like, no, just play the game. But want to watch it again? No, just play the game. It was very that's impressive. How yeah. it was. Huh. Yeah, especially especially since the guy actually had like one megabyte like in reserve just for that one opening FMV, which yeah. is like dedication. <laughs> Indeed, it is. But obviously, these guys never got that far in the game since it's just the first act. Yeah, they only show screenshots of the first zone, so that's kind of sad. Yeah, I uh, I did play uh, Sonic 3D on uh, PC, and I most remember how it had very epic um, uh, 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 atmospheric music. I thought it was like way too epic for uh, such a <laughs> uh, for, for a 3D Sonic game. The soundtrack is amazing. I... Yeah. Yeah, I've never finished it because I think I remember the uh, final boss with Robotnik was very difficult. Not the one with the, the head that's floating around, the one before it with the, with the uh, flaming, flaming arms. Oh, yeah, I don't think I ever beat that either. Yeah. Tough game. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic 3D Blast, indeed. But you actually called it Sonic yeah. 3D in England. We always call it Sonic Yeah, 3D it was Blast, just called right? Sonic 3D Flicky's Island. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, over here it was just 3D blasts, and yeah. yeah. I always played the Genesis version most because of, uh, thanks to Sonic Mega Collection. Um, yeah, I, I was able to beat it, like, a couple of times, especially getting all the emeralds, which is, like, the easiest way to get the emeralds. Uh, but I have yet to play the Sega Saturn version. I do have it. I probably blew, like, 50 bucks on it or so at a used game store, but I know the soundtrack is completely different, and honestly, I think the Saturn soundtrack is better. Just has a little more atmosphere, you know. Yeah, I, I think I prefer the Saturn version as well, especially the circus music. It's, big, it's so funny mm -hmm. to me. Oh, oh yeah, that was so weird. The circus <laughs> park. Yeah, I had Present a PC Saturn. version mostly. What's yeah. it doing? I mean, I've still yet to play the uh, the Sega Saturn version. I mean, I've got yeah. the PC version, but which is almost similar to the uh, Sega Saturn version, except the. Uh, because the special stages were like done on the Saturn hardware, they obviously had to redo them for the PC, but they didn't have much of a budget, so it was like just a quick slap bash and like there you go. It's like here's your 3D special stage, and it's like like bloody rubbish. That's damn sure. Yeah. I wanted to play the Sega Saturn version. That one looked much more better. Yeah, uh, for what I, I understand, uh, Sonic 3D for the Saturn came about because they couldn't finish Sonic Extreme in time. Yeah, it's like. Hey guys, can you basically make a Sega Saturn port of like, you know, Sonic 3D, please? That'd be most appreciated. Thank <laughs> you. You've got until 97 to get it done. <laughs> you have 28 hours to finish it. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> but yeah, it's a decent game if it's a little boring. I had the PC version as well. Not on my Saturn, though. But yeah, I guess uh, that ends our stream for today. Mm hmm. 
Unless yeah, anyone else has something magic. Uh, I'll be returning on Monday for April Fools. I'll do a little extra stream where I just <laughs> talk about a bunch of nonsense. You guys are invited if you want to join otherwise. Uh, not... Yep, I'll be up for that. All right, uh, fair right. enough. <laughs> yeah, I imagine we'll also be um, doing question and answers like how you, you used to do for April Fools, yeah. Well, sure. It depends on how many uh, people in the comments are there. <clears throat> <laughs> hey, quick plug in right now. <laughs> Same for April first. You know, dog pile Roger with a shitload of questions, <laughs> and, and, and anybody else that joins in. Yeah, but yeah, that's for Monday. So uh, we'll see. And another shows. thing for Monday. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, if I may mention it, it's Sonic related, so I thought I'd just jump in because I apparently can. So uh, <laughs> I'll be playing some levels from Roger's Sonic Robo Blast Two. So if anyone is curious about seeing that, I'll be live streaming it on Twitch. Uh, oh, uh, let me share that link in the chat. It will be at uh, seven seven o'clock Central. What was it Central Eastern Summertime? There you go. Um, so if anyone is interested in watching me play Rogers Sonic Robo Blast levels, you're welcome to join in. All right, we'll try to plan it that uh, I finish my stream right before her starts, I guess, so we can immediately link it. We'll see. All right. You can also find me on Twitter if you want to stay up to date, like, which times and such. Uh, just my username, Double Silly. So hopefully some of you guys want to join in. There we go. That is all. Yeah. Anyone else has something to advertise? <laughs> Elise, you're working us? Oh, no, wait, you're looking for a job. I guess you're busy enough. Yeah, I mean, I'm still writing, of course. Yeah, you're but... still working on it. Good. Yeah, I'm still writing. I just had to take a small break so I could get my certification and then do some job hunting. Man, you're really busy. Job hunting, studying, yes. writing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so but that's just how I like it. <laughs> yes, I'm, a wor I'm, an an I'm an anemic workaholic. I think I've got a problem. <laughs> Out of all the uh, holics, that's uh, the decent one to have, I suppose. <laughs> Healthier one. Yeah. But yeah, take yeah. care of yourself, um, of course. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to advertise that the new campaign for Final Fantasy XIV, Dawn Trail, is going to be releasing sometime, I believe, in July. Oh, already? So for those playing it, uh, so you know. Yeah, I love Final Fantasy XIV, and so um, I play on the Excalibur server, and my character's name is Alvdis Drakadotter. Oh, Germanish. Okay. That surprised me. Actually, it's more Nordic. Nordic. Ah, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. You have history from Nordic? So, yeah. Huh? You have history from Norwegian or so? Or Sweden? Yes. Scandinavian. Ooh, nice. Yeah, Scandinavian heritage. So. There we go. Alrighty. Look, you have something uh, you want to plug? Not, not at the moment, but I would probably, uh, as a reminder, that in... June, I believe, we're going to have the uh, um, the full demo of Glide the Dragon released in uh, on Steam. Nice, so you're doing ah, a voice yeah. in that game, huh? Yes, yeah, so I voice yeah. the uh, the psychic character Wing. There we go. Oh yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah. It's yeah. been a while. Speaking yeah. of Spyro the Dragon, huh? <laughs> Inspired by it. <laughs> yes, no, he's <laughs> by Spyro. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just realized, uh, I just got reminded of it because someone is mentioning Sega in the chat. Um, I'll also be uploading uh, the uh, the Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog live stream that me and Roger did last year. So that's also something to look forward to on April Fool's Day. All right, even though it's not super funny, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not good at improvising. It's a full video of like, probably gonna be four hours, four and a half hours, but um, I'll make sure Roger retweets it on his Twitter so I just share it around. Uh, maybe. Uh, so you guys can see from Rogers and my perspective. Going through the first time, okay. yes, indeed. Yeah. Melty, you got something you wanna advertise, plug? Um, well, not much. Just uh, you know, just working on my video projects. On it's mostly the whole co-op episode with me and Sala for Archie Sonic character files, where we're covering uh, Archie Sonic's version of Omega. So that's gonna be fun. And uh, yeah, the villager Minecraft YouTube poop thing that's uh, gonna come out. Not sure which one is gonna come out first, but before all that, there was there is gonna be an April Fool's thing that uh, me and Luca put together. So wait and see for that to air on Monday. Plenty left to come then for Monday. Already. 
You and you have something to plug? Uh, not not really. Good um, because I wasn't probably, I'll probably Yeah, just probably, I'll just probably just work on the um, try and work on the um, like that Sonic Underground encore scene I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, already did. Try and get that done. <laughs> Good luck with that. So we're all busy oh. bees, aren't we? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Busy-ish, at least. <laughs> there we go. All workaholics. So, good luck to all your mm -hmm. endeavors, and uh, I'll see you next time. Maybe Monday, and otherwise... Good luck to you weeks. too, Roger. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone, bye bye Goodbye. Yeah. See you guys later. Doodle pip. <laughs>